Crew. Axel. Vincent. Sir Venom. <laughs> you began your adventure at Rudolf van Richten's tower, discussing how to enter Castle Ravenloft. You determined that you were going to bring Rudolf van Richten, Irina, and Kazimir Velikov into the castle with you. You thought it best that they accompany you, especially Irina. And so you set forth, the body of Esmeralda de Avenir in tow, along with a number of allies who decided to meet you at the castle gates as you stormed the fortress of your enemy. As you did so, you were met with no resistance. You walked in and decided to go in with a bang, sending in a wagon with Esmeralda's body, all of her goods and worldly possessions, and the dozens upon dozens of bottles of alchemist fire she had in the wagon into the entryway <clears throat> which, with a single spark, you set ablaze. The Inferno killed several what appeared to be red wormling dragons, small little dragon creatures that attempted to escape, and even though they are heat-resistant creatures, were consumed by the blaze. You then went up to a tall tower, delving into the castle, finding a young woman from Barovia, and going into a library and seeing a picture of Irina herself but probably from a different time. Going further, you found what appeared to be a large tower with a beating heart at the top. It's here now that you find yourselves after having destroyed said heart that caused a sanguine flood down through the center of the tower and quakes as it seemed to rock the building itself. Esmeralda and Riku did end up falling. Featherfall, however, caught you. And I believe that you dimension doored back up to your friends. Is that correct? Or did you walk? Missed, <clears throat> we missed you stepped to uh, catch ourselves. Gotcha. And then, uh, then we walked the rest of the way. Gotcha. And so you currently find yourselves having defeated what appeared to be some sort of arcane artifact linked to the devil himself in one of his towers in the depths of his castle. You are all at good, if not perfect health, I believe. What would you like to do? Um, I want to go investigate. Like, there are, is there anything still left, like floating here, or did everything like fall down? Yeah, it all fell down. It was uh, effectively uh, turned to viscera and flooded, and like fell down into the uh, below corridor. Didn't Arena and I get covered in some of it? Yeah, you did get covered in a little bit of it. And uh, um, I'd ask Riku and Vincent, like, a little nudge, and like, look at. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm covered in blood, too. Look at, like, myself and Rico and Irina. Be like, you guys want to give a little magical assistance? Clean us up, maybe? Uh, Riku's like, yeah, let's, uh, let's freshen up. And, uh, use his prestidigitation. That word. On, uh, on us to help clean up the blood. Rudolf Van Richten actually just sort of shrugs it off and says, don't bother. But he does have this, like, horrible... You can see, like, the whites of his eyes across what is effectively just a bloodied face. Covered in blood. Oh, yeah. Very much so. <clears throat> and I guess, uh, maybe should we check this door out at the top of the tower? Which way did we come wanna... from? Are we, are we at the top? Oh yeah, because this it keeps going up, right? This yeah, it it does keep going up, but you can't see above you. There is um a floor above you. There's a ceiling above you. Whereas beforehand, the tower just drops straight down through back to the first floor. Um, there is a door over by Sir Venom, uh, but then you know the stairs do go up as well. Perhaps we poke our head in this door and then maybe continue up. I guess I would uh I'd listen at it to see if I hear anything on the other side. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Let's start the session with that. Ooh, like the lowest I can possibly roll. What did it come to? 11. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, you're not able to make out anything from beyond with that sort of roll. Well, let's uh, let's see what happens. So I, as I look, see that I got the boys at my back, and I would uh, I'd slowly open the door. Okay. Uh, let me begin to show you what that looks like, and I will find the description <clears throat> as well. Uh, do you have dark vision, Sir Venom? Um, I think so. I do. Dark vision up to 60 feet. Okay. In this instance, I think you're going to be able to see uh, just about that much. And you do the begin to see that there's some sort of staircase that goes down. I just realized, with the T-Flag, I have resistance to fire, dark vision, and a flying speed. <laughs> you just realized that well, not just, but it was, like, <laughs> all of it together. Yeah. Like, I picked a tiefling for the flavor, and then uh, that's what I did. Design but choice. Guess, uh, I said, right. uh, should we slowly start moving down this uh, this hallway? Hey, it looks, whoa, 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 looks legit. What's wrong, Riku? Didn't mean to grab that. Uh, I'm just wondering... If we go further up the tower, if we go down this random hallway. That is the choice. I think uh, they're probably they're both good options. Sir Venom will do whatever. How about this, uh, Sir Venom? While we have this area secure and we know we're somewhat safe, perhaps we look ahead. Don't you have a fancy spell for such an occasion? I do, in fact, have a fancy spell for such an occasion. Well, uh, yes, yes. I I hold out, hold out. Riku crosses arms. Wow, Riku, you <laughs> know a lot about this and, guy. Uh, well, he I, mentioned it. He mentioned it previously when we were talking about storming the castle. I Riku did. recalls. I'm <laughs> actually I'm surprised that we haven't we didn't bust this out from the very beginning. Uh, um, new new rule: no fancy spells allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I I'd right. hold out one hand and then hold my my holy symbol with the other one and use my spell to cast Raven Queen's Eye. Uh which one is this? Uh, which one are you reflavoring again for this? Uh, this, is, this is Arcane Eye. So it's basically it's the same thing except the eyeball is a raven's eyeball. Cool. All right. There is a small floating raven's eyeball. Which way would you like to go with it, and what is it allowing you to see? Uh, let's see. Everything. I mentally receive visual information from the eye, which has normal and dark vision out to 30 feet, and can look in every direction. Like okay. a drone. And it's invisible, I guess, to everyone except... Can I make it so that, like the party can still see it, or is it just invisible? Uh, what does it say about it's visible to everyone, but it says you create an invisible magical eye. Oh, then it's uh, invisible. I would say I don't think the party can see it. Okay, so yeah, see me like conjure a uh, like a raven's eye that just like shimmers into nothingness, and uh, then I will send it up the stairs to see what's up there. Okay, up the stairs. Uh, let me switch the map over for you for that one. Where are you at, Castle Ravenloft? Zapparo, we just flipped through the maps now. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, and actually, <laughs> funny enough, I think I need to build a scene. Actually, before, before I commit to casting that, that would be my last fourth level spell slot. Okay. Which would take um banishment off the table which is like my strongest spell i think it's, it's okay where, like, i i can just like delete demons if they fail the saving roll they're just they're gone i think i think we're okay without it i think it's okay. a better use here and you know if this ends up being a multiple day thing you know maybe we take a long rest true and I do still have all my third level, second level, and first level spot slots. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you're fine. Continue on. Got a lot of sluts. <laughs> and that's what they're there for, right? We're they're they're there to use them. True. I just, I guess I'll, I still have magic circle, which is the one I really want. But being able to cast banishment yeah. on like some big giant demon would have been cool. You can but recover also... spell slots as a cleric, can't you? 
I don't think I can go fourth level. Not yet. Eventually, yeah, sir. I can, do, I can do it twice. I have to use my channel divinity, and I can do expended spell slot up to level two. It's not so bad. But I feel like my channel divinity would be way more useful. Especially since I can use that uh, that raven kind symbol. Oh, yeah, that sure. thing. Anyone, yeah, anyone rolling against me is disadvantage. We haven't even... Uh... Yeah, you haven't even used that thing yet. The thing's going to be pretty, pretty gnarly. Okay. So, I will say you send your eye upstairs, and it shows you the following. Uh, there is a room, and this room would be the North Tower Peak. The stairs end at a dark and dreary room with manacles attached to the walls. In the middle of the room is a wood-framed bed with fitted leather restraints. At the foot of the bed rests a closed iron chest. Its lid sculpted with an emblem. A wooden ladder leads up to a trapdoor in the ceiling. Thin streams of water drip through the rotting trapdoor's wooden frame, forming a puddle around the base of the ladder. Ceiling's roughly nine feet high. Uh, the manacles appear rusted. The um, emblem on the chest. As you move closer to it, as as your I'm just assuming your eyes gonna like move around the room to be able to see everything. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's very clearly the uh, von Zarevich crest, Strahd's family crest. Ooh. Um, is this his brother's world? Yeah, I'd pass all this on to the party, and then I'd use a uh, minor illusion to make like a replica of the. Uh... The crest on the chest. Okay. You'd be like, I think we uh, that room might be important. Someone was being held up there. There's manacles, and then there's this chest with this crazy symbol on it. But I didn't see any bad guys, so I think the coast should be clear for us to move up there. Well, why don't you just keep looking around? Do you have any sort of limitation on how far away this thing can go? Riku would say. Um, I do not. Keep going. Why, not look, why not take a stroll? Keep looking ahead. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Is the trapdoor open? Can I, like, the eye go through it? Uh, the trapdoor is closed. Can the eye pass through solid objects, or does it have to... <clears throat> I think I some... it's... It can squeeze through pretty small spaces. Let's see here. A solid barrier blocks the eye's movement, but the eye can pass through an opening as small as one inch in diameter. Uh, roll me a d100. Anything over a 95, I will say that it, it can find a spot to squeeze through. Damn. Aww. So, 56 in this in instance. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say you don't see anything that you think the eye could squeeze through. Even though there's water leaking through the trap door, it's just not big enough for the eye. In that case, I would say the, uh, I'd Go back the other way, and I'd send the eye down that hallway. Yeah, you, that we were looking at. you could, you could do that, or send it just all the way down to the bottom of the fucking tower. Like you could go anywhere with that bitch. Yeah, but go. There's no like range limitations, but it's only up for an hour. Yeah, but well, this this is a good way for us to decide where we want to go next. You know, before we really? just jump into into a uh, situation. Okay, so I'll bring you back to this location at the very least. Do you want to go down with the eye? Uh, well, that's where we came from, isn't it? Should we go down, or should we check out that hallway? I'm going to check out the uh, hallway first. Then, yeah, then may we'll as well. Down. Okay. So as you send the eye into uh, the quote-unquote hallway, it actually turns... Uh, it, it really quickly turns into what appears to be actually the top of one of the towers. Whoa. and And you can see quite a bit... Um that is like you know not uh let me actually open it up let me see if i can yeah and this spell is really dope is it outdoors yeah that's the top of one of the towers right there yeah so as the eye enters some of the fog clears and you can then see that it's not just a hallway it is the rest of what is very clearly the top of a tower with a staircase leading down Um, I guess go down the stairway. Naturally. 
Okay. So you're going to send the eye back down the staircase that way. Let me just switch over to the correct map. Sorry about this, Nick. No, this no, is no, a no, fourth... no. This is uh, what I got to get the use out of a fourth level spell, I guess. Yeah. yeah. This is really <clears throat> cool, though. I. That's. Let me just make sure. It's okay, like fine, yeah. familiar, but it's it can't be seen, basically. Yeah. So this stairway is going to descend back down through the castle. Oh, you guys can't see that. That should be cutting. I see nothing. You can see that, right? So yeah. it opened up this stairway here, and it will continue downwards. And I'm going to go down through the castle, basically like opening these stairways for you. So I just want to make sure that I do all case. of these correctly. Yeah. So it goes down one flight of stairs. It goes down a second flight of stairs. And there are no doors off of this, to be very clear. It's going to go down a third flight of stairs. This might be the one. Oh. And as it goes down the third flight of stairs you very clearly see into what is some sort of uh, entryway with alcoves. And I'm just opening up the alcoves here for you to see, um, along with a door at the end of it. Um, there is also a door that is ajar leading down further into the castle. And this, this door is all sealed up tight? That door is also sealed up tight. So I'm okay. saying that your eyes are basically here, but you can kind of continue down to see that it descends. And this is, like, very dark down here. I'd keep going down that way. Okay. Love it. Descending into the depths of the castle. Let's see. Dude, what's the worst that can happen? Like, we alert the bad guy to our presence? <laughs> Fair enough. Well, something would have to be strong enough to well, see it. So anything visible. that can see this eye is bad news. <laughs> uh, it continues to descend. And uh, actually, Sir Venom, you give me a give me a history check, Sir Venom. And this is unique to Sir Venom in particular, uh, because you were imbibed with some level of memory through the Raven Queen of Uriel. I got a 16. I'm going to say that if you make an appropriate intelligence check above a 10, just roll a d20. If you make above a 10, you will be able to guess this. 16. Okay. You are pretty sure that this is lower. You are about to go descend lower than anywhere Uriel got to in his maiden voyage, and only voyage, in Castle Ravenloft. If you keep going down. Let's keep going down. Okay. And this is where I have to bring in another new map. Give me two seconds while I do this. And I don't think, uh, I don't think this spells like concentration. Or it is. Oh, it is? Can I still sure can cast cantrips during a concentration spell? Uh, I think you just can't cast other con spells. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. The concentration gets replaced. Yeah. Okay. And while while my arcane eye is off doing this, I'd keep uh, like casting minor illusion to like sh show what the eye is seeing, so that the rest of the party can like follow along. Okay. Make a performance check for that just while I bring up the new map just to see if you can actually be describing that Roll, appropriately. Bitch. <laughs> Not one. Uh, I mean it's it's he's trying to give he's just showing like a spiral staircase going down, but it looks like oops. a like a literal screw. Three year old fucking crayon drawing. Yeah, your illusion is uh low resolution. Exactly. It's like we're we're storming his castle on like a Nintendo entertainment system. <laughs> Worst. Okay, I need this one. Where is this?
So although because... um, going deep could be interesting and there might be crazy stuff down there, I think that we're looking for if we're looking if we're looking for Strahd, we're I just looking for anything. More up, I think he's more up high. I don't think we're really looking for Strahd. We're just kind of looking for anything at this point, just trying to get her feel our way around. You know? Yeah, I just figure like. I'm gonna go to the end. No, of, I agree. Like, I'm the, saying uh, you can we can explore where we need to explore. There might be something cool down here. I'm just saying I think we know that Strahd is up high. Like if I, we're looking for Strahd, he's up on a balcony. Well, we know we know what the the prophecy thing told us, but right. I, I just like the I idea of like mine. crossing like an area off the list. Like okay, we know what we're what's down this way. You know, I like that yeah, without having no, to like risk our cool. fucking necks going there. Or my familiar. You're familiar. Uh, let me just make Back. sure I have this like a hundred percent correct. Map twelve. Because like I'm bouncing between maps on. Yeah, I do have that correct. Sorry, I'm bouncing between maps in Owlbear, D and D Beyond, and like making sure I downloaded the correct one in. From this like website that I got all these maps from for us. Um, okay, so your eye goes down into this area. And you can see here that it is a closed door into some sort of like basement area, basically. Can you see that? Yep, you said it was a closed door? Yeah, there's a closed door there. All right, I guess uh, time to turn the eye around and go back to uh, I don't know, the next the like another path that I didn't take. Okay, let me uh, just look through the maps briefly here. Uh, there was no path there. Was there a path on that one? Nope. No. Uh, I don't think there was a path for you to take actually with the eye besides going down the tower. So if you would like the eye to go back into the room where you guys were and then descend down the tower, we can do yeah, that. I think that's a good idea. Like the tower that Irene and I started falling down, but we only made it like close to the, like not all the way, but close to the bottom. Yeah, exactly. So the eye will like, um, what did I lose? My mouse just died. Uh, the eye will come back up and it will go to this spot here. And, and you know you can say Sir Venom like when it's back in the room with you. And then we can have it descending back down that tower. So I will go down one level with it. Uh, that would be this one. And you know that um, is that the right one? Yeah. You'll, uh, it would be this one. And you know that there is a door here that you did not go into. Uh, there is a door here. You believe it leads back outside to the balcony because you entered on the balcony over here. And I'll actually get rid of the characters just because that's not needed at the moment. Um, we really could get lost in this castle for days. <laughs> and then uh, is there anything else? Nope. Oh, you could have it go down that hallway. You didn't actually really go down this hallway. Yeah, let's have it do that. Okay. Uh, as you do so, that would be... Five. Dark alcoves line the walls of this long hall. The ceiling here has fallen, leaving rubble strewn across the floor. Overhead, the berm, beams of Ravenloft's roof are exposed. Lightning from the dark clouds above sporadically illuminates the hall, lighting the faces of life-sized statues in the alcoves. Each visage is frozen in terror. There are ten statues in total. Uh, every time, and because you have dark vision, you can see this, so every time the lightning flashes, the faces go from stoic to horrified and in pain, and then back to stoic in the dark. So these statues are definitely something. Um, I guess all all my eye can really do is just look at things. So I guess if it doesn't, uh, or I guess it'll I'll have it like go right up to a statue and investigate it more closely to see if there's like writing on it or anything or 
any signs of life or signs of like someone messing with it. Uh, okay. Which one would you like to go to in particular? Uh, let's do this one. Okay, that one. Uh, there is not. You actually wait for a while, and eventually you see the pained expression cross the face as lightning once again flashes above. Um, okay, I guess in that case I would, uh, I'd go down, bring the eye back and go down to the bottom of this. Bottom right. of the big tower. So I'm going to have you pass by the second floor, which you have not actually been to yet. Uh, you can see that two of the folk here fell at one point in time, hiding them. You do notice once again that there are uh, there's one exit here in this instance. And then as you descend further, and I'll go to the first floor here. This opens up into a bit of a grand entryway on some level, and you can see quite a bit here. Um, you will see. Bloop. I just don't want to overshare. So I'm being a little cautious here. So you can see quite a bit here, right? Um, and you can even see, like, this This is an open hallway here. Uh, and if you would go around that hallway, it goes further. There are stairs that lead down, however. Uh, there are no other doors in this section. And so it's not like you're necessarily uh, able to, like, pass through anything else. Uh, just primarily in this instance, the, um, the stairs up, the stairs down, and then the hallway there. Um, so I think that's, I guess I'll keep going down the stairs, see what's down here. Down these stairs? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the only place that I can go now, right? No, it could go down that hallway to the left. Oh, hey, I'll do the hallway first then. Okay. So I'll go up that way. And as it does so, can somebody roll me a uh, D20, please? Who's got the hot hands? Yeah, not me. I keep rolling ones and twos. Want me to do it? Or Axel got it? Okay. okay. Uh, the hallway is empty. Uh, it is... Uh, let's see. Let me just make sure of that, actually. Back down to the main floor. This long, narrow hall, uh, corridor runs east to west. Cobwebs fill the hall, obstructing slight... Uh, obstructing sight beyond a few feet. The eye is able to pass through without issue, however, and it comes to an intersection with a closed door. Uh, is that actually a closed door? I don't think that's a closed door. It comes to an intersection with a tower and then a hallway heading back to the south. Light actually is uh, shining through some of the area to the south, and I will give you a better view of that because it's unobstructed. Um, you can sort of see that. In fact, some of the blaze of the Inferno from the entry hall, you believe, is shining through the southernmost light here. Um, whereas the room on this side is open to your view. And you can see uh, some of the individuals outside moving around, some of your comrades. I was actually wondering that, like, how it's just... They're just holding on the fort. They um, seem to be doing fine outside, actually. Uh, there's no combat. I'd, uh, I'd investigate this whole area, see if there's anything useful left behind. Yeah, let me uh, provide you with a full description as you look around this room. That would be... A high-domed ceiling caps a 30-foot-wide 30 30 octagonal room before you. Frescoes faded with age adorn the ceiling, but their images are impossible to make out. Tall, thin arrow slits look out over the courtyard. Each arrow slit is roughly two and a half feet tall and four inches wide, so you can make out just, you know, narrow bits of scenery from the outside. Otherwise, the room is relatively nondescript. Okay. Well, back to the, uh, back to the stairs it is, so I'd Send the eye back. I'm going to go check out what's down here. Okay. You know, this is a hell of a way to explore Castle Ravenloft. Nobody, I've never 
thought of anybody doing this. It's pretty sweet, I gotta say. It is pretty uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, game 20. Let me... I'm just bouncing between all the maps. Give me two seconds here while I find that one. I mean, I'm kind of surprised a little bit you haven't found any bad guys, like, patrolling. Everything's quiet. Too quiet. Yeah, right? <laughs> It'll be like a video game, no they just henchmen. pop out of the ground. Yeah, no henchmen. Just waiting yeah. for something to just like catch the eye and be like, what's this? And just like look at it and then just like teleport to the other side. So, <laughs> so we've got some statues we could go check out, right? We found that. Okay, can somebody roll me a d20, please? Me. I can do it. Not to cut you off there, Vincent. No, I'm just... I was, th I was just talking out while you were... Uh, Ooh, talking. I matched your nine with a nine. Again, nice. uh, the stairways down contain nothing. Can I get another D20, please? Vincent. All right. Vincent. Roll a nine. You won't. That's a 20. That's that a 20. Is it? No. A four. That's, that's a, four. a four. Okay. Um... Thing is in the following staircase at all. Uh, let's see. Give me two seconds. I'm just double checking this one area. I don't know what we were so worried about with Castle Ravenloft. We could have cleared <laughs> it out at level one. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we're exploring like the connecting parts and not beyond the doors. But... Yeah. The dark passage runs for 20 feet, connecting an archway to the west with an ascending stone staircase to the east. To the north and south are two 10-foot square alcoves cluttered with rotting cloths and dirty rags. The ceilings here are covered with yellow lichen. What is lichen? Uh, right. It's like a uh, moss. Uh, I can't fireball in the center of the room. <laughs> Wait, can you cast things from the arcane eye? No. Okay. <laughs> so I should have sent my familiar. I could at least cast spells through him. Uh, there is a door, however. And uh, sorry, you might not, might not actually be able to see that based on the way I. Is the door uh, closed? It is, sadly. Oh. So, <laughs> what I'm kind of thinking is, what was the most intriguing door? And perhaps we have the group walk up to said door, open it, and then send the arcane eye in. <laughs> Does the arcane eye have a distance away from you that it like uh, needs? Nope, it'll be an unlimited distance. Wow, that's a hell of a spell. Just just thinking about it for two seconds, you could be in a place, cast arcane eye, all teleport out of there, and then be in a safe space and explore it entirely with the eye. So long as yeah. you weren't blocked by doors, but that's pretty wild. Yeah. How long has it been up for? Um, yeah, how long, how long have we been exploring with it? How, does it have a movement speed? Uh, 30 feet. So I am going to say it has been up for about 15 minutes while you've done all this. Damn. Not, not bad. That's not <laughs> yeah, bad, though. That's really good. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it really doesn't move more than... It's like uh, normal like a, walking speed. That's you know. Yeah, exactly. Like it's like half a mile that it would have moved in that time total, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, R Rika would just say, "Okay, which was the most intriguing door? Let's go open it and send the eye in." I would say somewhere near us. Yeah. So down the big stairwell one floor. The big, the big staircase, like the one we just saw. That's the one you, with the moss. Yeah, so at the very bottom of um, uh, the very bottom of the tower that you're in, down the stone uh, square staircase, that's where the lichen is on the walls uh, in this room, in this area here. So this would be like directly below you, essentially yeah. at this time. Right, right below where we killed the heart, essentially, just all the way down. And because you can see it. The the other staircase here is is through the the passageway down the tower that is opposite you currently. So, 
and now you can see you would go down and you would actually be going down like another level below where the eye currently is if you went down the other staircase yeah the other one's like creepy deep yeah i don't like how this it's like just covered normal in spider webs and shit deep. yeah this is like crypty deep i don't know this one. i feel like there's there's nothing good at the bottom of either we just got to sort of pick one flip a coin yeah, but that's, that's, there was that also, was the other thing that I was sort of on. realizing when we were exploring with the eye is that like it really doesn't matter which direction we go, we just kind of got to pick one and go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was gonna say there are um, doors off of the big um, tower too. As long as we don't get open. lost, you know that's that's the big thing. Just don't get lost. Uh, give me a perception check, actually, for a moment, Sir Venom. It's like my favorite thing to roll because I have a plus nine. <laughs> You'll probably see this without issue. Oh yeah. my goodness. I only got a 27. Okay. Um, as you're sitting here looking around the room, even with the dark, it was a little hard to make out at first with the dark vision. Uh, it's not hard anymore. Uh, you are able to make out that the blood, the sanguine flood, fills this staircase. Right? Because the heart above exploded effectively and poured blood down this space and as it did so it all poured down here and it is still trickling and it trickles underneath that door at this point i think we gotta go <laughs> like that that seems like we gotta go right it's effectively a river of blood that has poured down the stairs it's pretty metal. We got to go there. Um, as the eye, eye is sitting there, effectively, you see a door open, and you can see into this room. There are two closed doors, one to the north, one to the south, but there is an individual who steps through. Let me just see if I have him. Castle Ravenloft. Oh, I don't have him super handy. Give me a moment here. Uh, he is an elf, this individual. He is an elf, and he appears quite dark. Uh, can What do you perceive through the eye in particular, Sir Venom? Um, what do you mean? Um, do you... Like, do you hear things, for instance? Uh, no, just audio, just uh, visual. Just visual. You do not hear things. Okay. Well, you see an individual uh, walking from what appears to be the north side of the room, and he is, uh, how do I describe him? He's a handsome, aged elf, sharp features, angular in nature of all kinds, wearing beautiful clothing. Um, you would probably put him... Uh, actually, roll an insight check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, he's clearly investigating the river of blood because as you look around, uh, it has pooled across a great deal of this room and has even trickled into probably the room that he came from and almost definitely the room beyond. Man, we make quite the mess. Can we go uh, confront this guy? Sure. Um, I mean, he's he's moving this way. He's going to move, like, up the stairs as well. And I'll just make this. Can you guys see the room underneath at this point? Some of the blood? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, he's he's moving up the stairs. 
if uh, if that matters to you. Is there anything you would like to be doing while he's doing so? I assume you tell your friends. Yeah, pa pass it on to the group. Let's go intercept this guy, Riku says. Kill everything in here. Okay, do you want to follow him? Like, what what would you like to do in particular yeah, let's follow, here? Let's follow him with the eye. Let's see where he goes. Yeah, we'll we'll guide you down the stairs. Like, we'll head that direction while you follow him with the eye. Okay, so he is going to begin to go up the stairs. It takes him a while, actually. Um, they're pretty steep stairs. It's quite a bit of work. I am going to say that you are able to get to. the second floor. So you were on the fourth floor. Uh, let me actually go grab your tokens from the fourth floor. That'll be easiest here. Whoops, wrong one. It's too many floors. Who made this castle? A lot of them. Yeah. So I'm going to grab you guys from here. And I will move you on to the second floor, which is this one. And I think if I just, oh, that was like nearly perfect. Just do this. Uh, you are here, and there is light emanating from your store, sword still, Riku, just in case uh, you, you don't want that to be the case. No, I'm good with that. You're good with that? Okay. Just I'm having a the light really close. Gotcha. So we can reduce it then if you would like. And you do begin to see this individual come up I, the stairs here. I think what it's at now is like the shortest it can go. Okay. So it does then, spill out over the there's steps. There's also another five feet of dim beyond that. But that's the okay. bright light. Okay. It does spill out over the steps. So it is visible from down below. And mm -hmm. as you are walking, you can see this individual stop and look up at the lot of you. Riku leans over the edge, pulls a sword over, like points at him, says, you there, don't move. Uh, how high up are we from him? Like one story? Yeah, you're basically about 30 or 40 feet up. Did he, is he listening? He's listening. He's stopped moving. And he is staying like in this space. Uh, he his feet are covered in what appears to be blood. Uh, there and, is blood around his feet as well in that area. And how far away is he from us? Like, uh... then he put uh, draws his arrow and holds it on him, tells him not to move. I would say that he's about forty-five to sixty feet down. Uh, maybe even more than that. Maybe about seventy feet. Well, Riku would sort of signal the rest of you to start keep making your way down. <laughs> yeah, Vinny draws his bow and keeps it on him. And he's, um, like, he's like, at some point, jump. What are you doing here? Riku's just like pointing his sword at him. Okay. Um, are are you coming all the way down as well, Riku? No, I'm I'm just keeping my gaze on him. Oh, and, so uh, you're gonna stay here while everybody else goes down? Yeah, in case he moves. You said you said he's like. Less than 60 feet away from you, right? He's about 60 to 70 feet away from you, in particular, in that spot. Well, is it, is it 60 or, or is it more than 60? I'm going to say it's more than 60. Just All barely. Right, well, I, I would keep walking until I think I'm about 60 feet away from him. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's better. <laughs> yeah, you're probably now under 60 feet. Um, okay. I'll say this. If you want to stay there, that's fine. Everyone mm -hmm. else looks like they're going down. Is that correct? Yeah. I just want to All keep right. his attention while they're getting closer. Try to, like, keep his uh, gaze on me. He'll stay frozen. And as you all come to this spot, what I will say is you can come down the stairs here. Uh, Vincent, you jumped down here. Everyone else is still coming down the stairs this way. I believe you came down, jumped down as well, Axel. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Sir Venom, where would you like to be? Um, if they're moving in close, I guess I'd stick to range. Okay. 
And the individual before you has his hands up. He appears to be a Dusk Elf, same as Casimir. And as Casimir gets close, he goes, Rahadin. And you can see Rahadin, the individual before you, smirk slightly. Wait, you know this guy? Riku says, and uh, now that you guys are in close, he'll uh, he'll start going back down the stairs to catch up to you guys. Uh, most foul of creatures. He killed, he killed all of our families for that devil. And you see a smile. My lord was expecting you, though I'm surprised that you've made it this far. He looks above himself and he looks down at the floor. I see that you've done away with the heart. Would you like to come to dinner? No need to leave our guests waiting, and his hands out, spread out towards you invitingly. Come, we can uh, make our way to a more comfortable place, if you so wish. What guests? All of you. You're the guests of my lord, of course. I mean, he expected you to show up at some point or another. I'm just surprised that I had um, not yet determined that you were here. Does he seem, like, shaken at all, being surrounded by us? Like, how mm-hmm. how strong is his confidence? How would he like it if I, I put an arrow through I his I think chest? we need to insight check this man. Roll? Uh, yeah, uh, Sir Venom, roll an insight check on that. Like, is he bluffing us? Surely not. 28. No, you think he's serious. One, he actually seems to be inviting you to head somewhere. He seems genuine about that. He seems genuine about the fact that you believe Strahd was expecting you to come to the castle at some point. Yeah. Yeah. He seems confident in himself as well, is what you gain. I guess uh, since I'm, I'm next to Riku, I'd turn to him and be like, I'm kind of new to this group. Are we, oh. we going to go with him? Should we attack him? Where, where would you be taking us, Riku says back. Uh, well, we'd have to go back up the stairs there, or we could... We could go through some different stairs. Uh, we would simply go to uh, the far corner, and he sort of points in this direction uh, to the main banquet hall. I'd uh, I'd fly down to like block these stairs, then turn to him and be like, "What uh, what's down there? What's where you just came from?" How close do you get to him as you fly over him? Uh, not close enough for an opportunity attack. So at least more than five feet away. But yeah, how? So I go like... keep like a, a solid like ten feet. And then go to land here. Okay. Okay. You know, like a nice arc. I'm assuming this is like a fairly big room. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, the entire area, by the way, is covered in what can only be described as copious amounts of blood. Blood. Uh, uh, and I will just give you like a big splash pattern here. Uh, and this will, I gotta make that transparent for you. But there's a lot of blood everywhere. Um, and so you land in blood once again, and he sort of looks at you and he says, uh, truly, come, I-, I don't wish to, uh, cause a ruckus, no need to tussle. I know that one would like to, and he sort of points up at Kazimir Velikov, and Kazimir's looking down at him with nothing but daggers in his eyes. Oh, man. I yell to Kazimir, like, what do you think, Kazimir? What should we do with this guy? You think he's telling the truth? I kind of think he's hiding something down there. I don't trust him, Rictavio. I, I'll, I'll never trust him. He says as he sort of turns Riku to his puts friend. the sword on his shoulder and then turns to Casimir. He's like, you remember what we talked about before? And then uh, he points at uh, the other guy and says, prove yourself now, Casimir. What are you telling him to do? He was a pussy before and didn't fight. Now ah. I'm telling him to, uh, to prove himself. Roll persuasion check. I will. Man, I, I will roll like, a one and get an eleven. I feel like we got this guy, but he's not scared. Well, I want to shoot him. And <laughs> out. Uh, okay. Sir Venom set himself up. He's uh he's expecting someone to make a move. Uh, so as you say that, Casimir says, "With pleasure." Though I have a question for him first. Where's my sister, Rahadin? Where's Petrina? And Rahadin sort of looks up at Casimir and says, I'll never tell you, scum. 
To which then... Casimir throws a firebolt. Ooh. Oh. So he's Casimir. just gonna... He's gonna then, toss a quick firebolt. Can I react to him doing that, like cast a spell or something? Yeah, totally. If you would like, I want to use command on that man's down there. Okay, so he's gonna get hit by the firebolt f- first. It's actually gonna hit him with an eighteen, um, and that will end up doing. Uh, is it two d ten? I think so. Yeah. Oh, that was to myself. Sorry. Uh, it will end up doing nine points of damage to Rahadin. Uh, which is not bad. Uh, it is going to bring us into initiative, however. So Hell what I'll yeah. say is, you can attempt to cast command, but it will be your turn. Okay. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll initiative yeah, if you've not done so. That. Holy shit. You got the <laughs> lowest roll with a 20. We've been itching yeah. for initiative. <laughs> The dice knows. Raring for combat. I mean, Irina got a 17. She was still, like, good. Um, Very good. Okay. So, Riku, uh, actually, you're going to go one, two, three. I'm going to say that you're. Uh, we're just going to work with turn order at this point because Casimir mm-hmm. casting the Firebolt would be the initiative uh, reaction. Um, so okay. it's actually going to be Rahadin who goes first. He got a 26. Ooh. And Gosh, he's darn. immediately going to gosh what does he want to do I don't like this <laughs> so many choices <laughs> uh, he is going to immediately leap forward off of the stairs up over the railing in between the two of you and I would need A wisdom saving throw from mm. the two closest individuals there, Vincent and mm. Axel. The fighter and the barbarian making wisdom saves. Uh. This is uh, what a oh, well, it's technically an eleven because of the plus one from Argon Boss, but I don't know. Okay, yeah. So both of those are failures, mm-hmm. and that is going to be. 11 points of damage. Give me an insight check for both of you to see if you can understand what's being done to you. What is this? <laughs> uh, Axel, you actually understand pretty quickly. Uh, Vincent, all you hear are awful, horrific, terrible screams. Um, Axel, through the parsing of the screams, you hear cries of help, please, all in the same accent and intonation and even mixed with elvish words of the Dusk Elf people. You suspect that what you're hearing is some sort of psychic ghost of the crimes that Rahadin has committed as he steps close to you, Hmm. bringing to bear them on your own mind. It's fair to assume that was psychic damage. Yes. Mm, My weakness. Uh, Oops, sorry. Ignore that for a moment. Uh, he does take, uh, let me think, he's going to take two strikes against you, Axel. The first being a natural 20, the second being uh, 13, so hit and a miss. Yeah. Okay. Damn. And for the natural 20, he's rolling? going to. Plus 10. <laughs> he's going in. God. That's pretty good. Damn. So he's going to do nine plus five, so 14 points of damage with the critical against you. Uh, Vincent, that's going to be a 29 to hit. And that's going to be seven points of damage with the scimitar. As he leaps forward with some sort of level of supernatural strength into this space, causes you to take this amount of psychic damage, and then unleashes a barrage of blows to you each. That will be his turn. Vincent, what would you like to do? Um. I need to get separate, get some space. Um, he, but uh, I don't want to get opportunity attacked. Um, I guess I'm just gonna have to hold my ground for now, or try to get out of there. Uh, I want to get out of there. I'll take, I'll take my chances. 
So Vincent's going to uh, do some acrobatics to try to get back up here. Back into the group. Get back onto the stairs. Get some high ground on this guy. He's got plus 10. Did you, are you taking the attacker of opportunity? I'll while you... take it. Yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, he will swing with his scimitar as his bonus action. Or as a reaction, I should say. Oh, natural one. It's a miss. Good. Nice. All right, now Vinny is uh, perched up high. Now he's going to rip off some uh, sniper shots. Okay, and as you run away from him, the flat of his scimitar blade smacks off your turtle shell, and you leap onto the stairs, turning around and swiftly unleashing. Ooh, nat 20. Oh, Ooh. shit. All right. You don't fuck with Vincent. Uh, oh. Wow. Oh. That's oh. Max. Yeah, Bullet but shot. I also get to roll another one. Because uh, cause I got a crit on my snipe shot. So I think it gets another one. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, it is. Another D8. Oh, uh, cool. Eight. Yeah. Another, <laughs> another six. So that's 36. Six. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, wait. 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 Something else? And yes, there's more. Uh, we're going to make that a... Um, um, a... Sh oh, a shadow arrow. A shadow arrow? Okay, what does yeah. that do? So he'll take an extra 2d6 psychic damage, which is 8. And then he must succeed on a wisdom saving throw of 11. Oops. Sorry, that first one was uh, an intelligence. That's wrong. A wisdom saving throw for him is going to be a 25. Okay, then never mind. And that's it. Okay, I mean, that's oh, pretty pretty good <laughs> yep uh and then vincent will take a follow-up sniper shot minus five uh so 17 yeah. is a miss oh Ooh. um if i use a lucky roll uh can i change it to a not the minus five uh, I'm going to say... I re do I have to do the minus five? I think you would still have to do the minus five. I'm going to lucky roll once, because I got okay. three of them. There we go. That's it. Right on. All right, another 22. Wow. Max damage again. Okay, he is bloody. Uh, Pretty wild. Damn. Actually. Um, I think you just did... The firebolt did like nine points of damage, which means you've done sixty-four points of damage, I think, by yourself in one turn. Yeah. That's about right. That's what I've been waiting to do this whole time. <laughs> All right. Um uh, that'll be good for now. I'll let I'll let the boys do some stuff. All right. Uh we come to you, Axel, holding your head momentarily, you shake off the psychic pain. You see that Vincent has moved beyond to the stairs, but Rahadin still is in front of you. How far down is that staircase that he's standing next to? Uh, that is a probably like 10 to, it's like a 12 foot drop uh, directly behind him to the south. And then obviously like going up or down the stairs is different. Hmm. I'm trying to think. So he's already bloodied. Is he going to even survive this round? <clears throat> Everybody else does range, except for... I assume Riku is doing some range. I do not do range any longer, at all. At all? Nope. Got rid of it. And Sir Venom is range? He has lots of range, yes. All right, I'm just trying to think, because if I take him to the ground then people with range will have disadvantage against them. And I don't want to 
do that. I can, uh, I can do both. I can do ranged and close range. And you fly. I do it all, baby. All right. Uh, here's what I will do. Uh, I will run up to this guy. Or I guess I'm already at him, so I'm just going to get in a position here. And I would like to uh, shoulder him down uh, like the lowest part of the stairs. So like okay. right here. So get him in that little area. Uh, go ahead and make a like an athletics check, and I will make a strength saving throw. You're spearing him over the railing? Oh, not spearing. I'm shouldering him. I don't want to go down there. The idea is you're trying to get him over the railing. Close line, like over the top rope. I mean, yeah. so I was thinking you needed at least five or more to beat him to do this. You did so. You're able nice. to successfully push him down. Go ahead and roll a d6. He's going to take one. Uh, he'll need to make a dexterity saving throw, but he is still going to take some damage from this. One damage. Okay. <laughs> uh, he lands on his feet. All right. And that uses my full actions, right? Yeah, I'm going to say that's uh, at the... Yeah. yeah. So grapple uses how much of your attack? Is it just one of your attacks? That is... That would be my question for you. I, uh, uh, I don't know if there's any... So I think a grapple technically only uses like one of your attacks. So let's double check. Because it's, it's effectively like... Oh, let me see if there's a shove. It, well, I got shoved from the action tab, I think, because it says actions in combat. And then... Um, okay, so if you yeah. are able to make multiple attacks with the attack action, this attack replaces one of them. Okay. So you can well, make another attack if you want. I probably should have started with the... Uh, we, we can we can retcon that if you want, because you would have <laughs> done that. All right, yeah, I would have used... If I knew... Uh, I assumed it would take in both my attacks, but if I knew it... I would have done the great axe, then uh, shoved him. Yeah, go. Yeah, take a swing at him. All right, we're gonna recklessly attack him too, because he's got that high AC. But it's just a regular, no great weapon master, and and we still miss two sevens. Okay. Uh, and then you, yeah. And then you shove him. And then I shove him. Um, trying to think, what are. Cunning action. Uh, yeah, I don't need no. Do I want to rage? I feel like you guys will murder the shit out of him before he gets to go again. So I don't know if I should rage. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, take a step back okay. and end my turn. Okay, Riku, what would you like to do? Uh, question. So how? I see that I'm. 20 feet away, but is it possible for me to get next to him in this turn? Um, honestly, he's more like 40 feet away just because of the like height differential. Um, if you jump down there, you can get next to him. It would hurt me, right? It would. Not a lot, though. I'll get hurted. Uh, ten, 10 feet takes a d6 of damage, so if it's about 30 to 40 feet, it's at least 3d6. Should be epic. What if... Bring down the sun sword right into his... What if I did a little misty step and then walk the rest of the way? Ooh, you could do that. We're gonna we're gonna do that. Misty step is a bonus action. Okay. Where would you like to misty step to? Tell me, Chief. How close can I get? <laughs> I mean, you can get, you can get right next to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's only he's only he's only like 35 feet away basically so like here and then just walk up to him yeah you're good all right so there goes my bonus action no bardic but we're swanging the sword here it comes 
like a hit. Yes, that is a hit. Bad. We're gonna swing again. And is is he undead? He is not undead. Fortunate. He's some. The fourteen is a miss. Mm hmm. Um. And I uh, I probably still have like another like what twenty twenty five feet walking. Uh, yeah, you could have another thirty full feet walking. You could you could have misty stepped right next to him if you'd wanted to. All right. Well, then I'd probably walk back up these stairs away from him. <laughs> okay, and and he has no reaction at this time because Damn. he's running against Vincent. That's a five yeah. head move. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. You like that? <laughs> right. uh, Sir Venom. Yeah, I was like, Riku's crazy. Right. <laughs> he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy, he's uh, he's bloodied already. He is bloodied indeed. Oh jeez. Right. Um. Hmm. Rico just pop him with another twelve damage. Uh. So let's see. Where am I? I'm right by Riku. Oh. So Put I that. Think... Can you hit Control Z? Just I want that back where it was. Oh, cool. Should snap back to where it belongs. Uh, did it? it did. Nice. Let's see, so I should probably save my high level. Do you even have a third level that would be good against him? I guess I'll start off with casting. Spiritual weapon. Summon that right next to him. <laughs> and my spiritual weapon is just a raven. Okay. So let's see. Is it made out of five. um uh radiant damage? Um let's see. Uh, force damage. Cool. Okay. So I'll take a swing with the Raven with a 26 to hit. That's a hit. So 12 force damage. And then... Oh, damn it. I keep grabbing that by mistake. Hmm. All good. Let's see, do I want to get up closer? Should we do range? So you've used your bonus action. You still get action and movement. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If I want to get in close or if I want to stick to range. Um, I'm just going to do range. So I'll do my firebolt, which I... I played for him as he uh he like fires like flaming feathers from his wings at him instead of just like random fire energy. Okay. So he swings his wings, sends a bunch of fire coated feathers that all miss. Okay. And as you do so, like the feathers like shatter off of the back wall. Uh Vincent, you do see all this, just in case that matters to you. Uh is there anything else you would like to do, Sir Venom? Any movement oh. other are you good? Vincent um, thinks the raven is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll I'll stay here and I'll keep uh, blocking this these stairs. Okay. Uh, that will be Rictavio who is next. He will sprint down the stairs past the others, and say, "Cass, we can't get him. Let him get away." Uh, and he will. Um, actually, let me measure this for Rictavio a little bit. Uh, it's going to be 15, 20, 25, 30, 
Uh, he's going to jump over the railing this way so he doesn't take damage. And then he will go here and here to try to begin to corner him. Um, Irina will jump down here and she'll yell, um, uh, does anybody need to be blessed? Everyone likes bless. Then he raises his hand. Yeah, okay. we all need to be blessed. Okay, she'll toss a bless down on y'all. Because she's good at that. She likes that. Uh, and actually, she'll put it on every single one of you. So she'll use it at level two. Okay. Love the D4. Love the D4. It's like the most powerful thing she can do. So I try to give it to you guys a lot. Uh, Kazmir. It's powerful. Will run down and he will jump down here as well. And he will use his full movement to begin to uh, block Rahadin from going up further. And also, like, they've got their swords out against him. Uh, we come back around to the top of the turn order, and he will yell as a layer action, Sanguinous! I need everybody within the blood area to roll a constitution saving throw. That's why it was important. Uh, uh oh. Make a few sticky. Blood. So Casimir saved. Uh, Rectavio failed. Ooh. Looks like Sir Riku, failed. you failed. And Sir Venom failed. Okay, everybody in the blood area begins to feel their blood be attracted to the blood on the floor. And if you failed, you are going to take full damage. If you succeeded, you are going to take half damage. As some of the blood begins to drip from your pores and is extracted from your body towards Damn. the blood on the ground. It's gnarly. Gross. Uh, so 14 points damage uh, would be to everyone except for Casimir, who's only going to take 7. And that was not a bonus action or anything. That was a layer action. So he gets his full turn still. Uh, Casimir and Rahadin need to make... Uh, actually, does he want to use his bonus action on that? Uh, Rahadin is going to use Misty Step. No, and he, and he is going to. Are you going to do something about it? No, I can't do anything about it. I'm just... <laughs> no. Okay, he is going to misty step, and he is going to misty step sixty feet further down the stairs, and out of sight. And then he is going to you. You hear footsteps uh, descending the stairs as he seems to misty step and then sprint. From what you can tell, don't let him get away. Uh, if you guys would like, we can enter into a chase mode. Yeah, I don't. We don't want him to get away. You guys want to follow, right? No, sure. definitely. Okay. Yeah. You could think I mean, Riku has an even take better some, teleport. We could take so. somebody down there with him and you know go ahead of him. Cut him off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, let's see. Riku, Riku looks and grabs Axel. You come with me. <laughs> I can hit him with a. Oh, I can't restrain him with a shot. I but that's why he grabbed Axis, so you can just grab him. Yeah. So let me do a little I bit mean, of measuring. I mean, I guess if you could just Misty Step out again. Can, yeah, you guys can have a Misty Step battle of chasing. But if, we're, if we're down there, he can only mist, Misty Step to a place he can see, right? Yeah. Yeah. Vision. That's exactly right. Um he he was able to sort of like look over like the edge and see down further into into the depths of the darkness, um, and he will do that and he will leave your sight for now. Um, that said, uh, we will start with Vincent. What would you like to do, Vincent? I'll and I will come uh, back. Just use all my movement to chase after him until I can find him or get him okay. in my sight. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to select everyone here. And I'm going to bring you down that level, and I'm just going to make most of you invisible. Okay, so Vincent, you would like to use all your movement to get as far as possible? Yeah, well, I would try to, like, I don't know, just, like, jumping. To, 
I'm pretty acrobatic, so I want to do some like parkour, try to get to jump, jumping, and try to maximize my distance. Okay. My so, movement. so what I would say is make an acrobatics check, and then I, based on that acrobatics check, it'll give you like a certain amount of like non damage because you might have taken 22. damage. All good. You don't need to that first ten feet of jump. You're like totally good on. Um, you are able to get down to where I have you right here. All right. And you Looks do like... not see him anywhere. All right. Then I will use my action to dash. Is that what it is? Oh, I, I'm I'm saying that was your full dash to get. There oh, okay, okay. Um, from where you were. All right, so I can't see him. You cannot see him. Um. Okay. Then um, I'll just stay around the corner, and wait for uh, the other boys to catch up. Okay. Uh, Vincent, what would you like to do? Or sorry, uh, Axel, what would you like to do? How far does my uh, fifty feet of walking get me? Fifty feet is going to get you a little bit further than if you are. You going to jump over the stairs as well, or not? Uh, no, nah, I don't. No, nah. uh, whatever way I can go without having to like injure myself. I want to like sprain an ankle or something. Okay, uh, your fifty feet is going to get you to here because you had to go a little further around things, but you have an extra like forty feet on Vincent in general. So when all said and done, calculated wise, I'm going to say that you're about fifteen feet ahead of him. And that's when I didn't dash. I'm saying that is your dash. Oh yeah, I just want my fifty feet. My regular 50, fifty feet would probably put you like off the map still. Damn, I didn't realize I was that far away. These stairs are pretty steep, or they're uh, not just steep, but they're pretty long. Okay. Um. Yeah, sorry. Something the map makes clear to me, but on my side, but doesn't make clear to you guys. Those stairs go, I think it's like 40 feet down or something like that in this instance. Like they're pretty long. Yeah, hmm. they're another, it would be like another 40 feet back up to the top, essentially, from where Vincent is. So you would be just off the map, I would say, somewhere like, you know, like right off of here. All right, and if I was to jump down, where would I have been? If you were to jump down, you would be uh, a few feet ahead of Vincent there, I would say. And that's just with the 50 feet of walking. Uh, fuck it. Let's do it. Do you want to use your action or your bonus action? To, oh, I have to use my to jump down. No, no, no. To um, uh, if you're gonna dash or anything. Um. So I just automatically got down. Oh, you, sorry. With your fifty feet, you got to here. I was, I was thinking you were about to go further. No, I was gonna jump down so I could get as far as I could get. <laughs> and then. Uh... And then if I was to use my bonus action to dash, where would I get okay. to? Uh, you see that that door is open. You could get to like here-ish. Somewhere in here. Because you were here, so. Damn. Like somewhere like that. And this guy isn't anywhere around here? Uh, you don't see him. Uh, you do notice that the door on both sides as you enter this room is closed to the north and south. You got the crazy movement. You still can't catch him. Um, can I, like, go right here? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, I got nothing for my action. I can't see this guy. I don't know. Just gonna end our turn to stand in here. It's confused. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that brings us to Riku. What would you like to do? 
run after the boys. Okay, and how much movement are you going to use? You're at the top of the stairs. All of it. Okay, all of your movement, 60 feet, I believe, gets you to... Um, I think you're actually going to be a little bit behind Vincent just because he jumped over the stairs. He'll be here. Okay. So that was your action and movement. All good? Mm -hmm. Uh, Sir Venom, same thing for you? Did we lose Sir Venom? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, um, yeah, use whatever movement I have. Would I be able to use, like, the 30 feet to get within 120 feet? Uh, you have no idea where he is. Is what I would say. He'll be okay. standing right next uh, to us, invisible for all we know. Uh, let's see if I have a spell for this. Mm. What does this, this spell do? No good. Um, like how would uh how would spirit guardians work? Uh, Do I have to like? Would I have to like see them for them to hurt your opponent? Yeah, let's see. I don't think so, technically. But what I would say is, like, you would have to get use 60 feet of movement just to get to where Riku is. Okay. So I'll, I'll use that first. Your guardians use... might hurt allies. Careful. Uh, it only hurts allies if I let it hurt allies. Okay. So I guess I would, yeah, use my... My movement, my action to get up with Riku. And I think that's everything. Okay. Um, I will place uh, Rictavio and Casimir, because they're already on the stairs, mind you. They will be slightly ahead of Vincent. They're going to use all of their movement to get there. Irina is like huffing and puffing to keep with a lot of you. She is here. Uh, your spiritual weapon only gets 20 feet of movement, right? Ah, uh, that I don't know. I thought it was... I guess I just assumed it was 30 without even looking. So let's see. Yeah, I don't think it gets much. It's tough remembering, like, I have to remember what I renamed them to. Oh, yeah, sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, 20 feet of movement. Okay, so for now, that's, like, left behind. It'll be, like, slowly catching up, but I have a sneaking suspicion where you guys might finish this beforehand. Yeah, it's, it's a slow... It's a slow raven. Yeah. Um, you hear a voice shout from behind the door, Axel, Sanguinis, once more. So you hear the, you hear his voice from behind this door. And all of you who are touching any blood at all, which looks like everyone, please make a constitution saving throw. It is a DC 17. And, uh, flying speed is different from hovering. Right, like I can't just like hover a foot off the ground. Correct. You cannot just like, like hover. Works if I'm going from like A to B. Exactly. Uh, Irina saved and roll your like, bless. Wait, oh yeah. Oh yeah, bless. Sir Venom, you in particular might. But it was a get con. This one. Yep. Hey, Sir Venom, you're gonna take half damage. Sweet. Uh, Vincent, you failed. Riku, if you roll your bless, you're going to succeed. Bless rolled. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. It's going to be. Uh, 17 points of damage for those who failed. And then 
nine points of damage for those who succeeded. Uh, this time, Kazimir Velikov is fully hurt. He is still up. Uh, Irene is going to take nine damage. This is the most damage I've taken in any fight this whole campaign. Okay. Get used to it, Vincent. Interesting, because you're a fighter. I know. I'm ranged, though. I usually stay out of the way. Um, let's see. Uh, and then, um, oh gosh, what is he going to do? He's going to do, he's going to use all his movement to do that, movement and action to do that. Uh, okay. And that will be his turn. And then it will bring us back to Vincent. What would you like to do? Actually, let's, um, it's 8.30. Let's take... Now that Sir Venom's walking away for a minute, uh, let's take five, and we'll start at the top of the turn order with Sir Vincent. Or with Vincent, sorry. <laughs> Sir, Vincent. Sir, Sir Vincent. He's been knighted <laughs> like Sir by Vincent the Raven there. Queen. I thank you, Sir, Sir Vincent. Vincent. I'm going to be the Raven King. Uh, Vincent, it is your turn. You hear Axel yell, North. Yep. And he is far ahead of you. Well, get the run him. Get the hoof in it. Okay. Uh, do you want to use... <laughs> yeah, what do I... What do I got? 30, probably. Yeah, so 30. And 60 if I... A little extra. Mm-hmm. Uh, my thing. All right, we'll use our full and try to uh look down the hallway. See if I can get a uh, visual. Okay. Uh, you do not get a visual here. I'll put you where you're. Oops, <laughs> you just moved a... your bless. <laughs> a visual confirmation. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put it back on you. Give me a moment. You cast invisibility. And then I'll put it here. So that door is closed, to be clear, oh, when you enter okay. this room. Um, All right, then never mind. I'm just going to get up to it, but stay to the right of it. Stay to the right of it. Like a, here. Yeah, like a tactical position. Out of the blood. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll say at that point, you can like mostly get out of the blood, uh, if not entirely. Um, yeah. Yeah, you'll step out of the blood there. Uh, Axel, what would you like to do? Oh, we're going to run it now. Uh, we're going to go up to the door and try to open it. Okay, the door opens without issue. All right. You are able to open the door. Five, ten. And it opens into what is very clearly an office. Huh. Uh, this office, the shadowy room is in perfect order. You can see that the blood has only ever so slightly trickled into it. A great table stands here with its chair, inkwell, and quill set carefully in place. Lances, swords, and shields that bear the Barovian crest are hung neatly on the dark oak-paneled walls. What's your passive perception? Fifteen. Uh, you can see bloody footprints. And then disappearing. Huh. So, uh, seems like what is this? What is this thing on the wall here? We're, we're walking in the room, so it's a fit. We're officially in the room. What is okay. this? Uh, goes right. Up. What is this on the wall? The white uh, scene that here. in particular is a. Uh, let me just see. Uh, that would be a set of candelabras set into the wall that are currently unlit, along with a sword and or a shield with like two swords set into it. You can actually kind of make it out here. It's the same sort of look. Okay. As this. Yeah. 
Ooh, spicy. So the question is, is he invisible or did he do something over there and then go into like a secret room? Hmm. Well, has Axel seen anybody go invisible before? Rico, have you gone invisible in front of uh, Axel? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably have, because you're that kind of guy. All right. So first thought is maybe he's invisible. So we're going to walk up to where the... We're just going to, like, move our arms around and see if we hit anything. Because <laughs> uh, we're looking for invisible people. Okay. Uh, let me check something. <laughs> just... How much? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I've used 30 so far. And I'm just going to do something for a minute. Oh, perfect. Okay. So let me do this. Uh, and then let me do this. Um, okay, so you do that, and as you do so, something is going to come out of the shadows and take an attack, attack of opportunity against you. Oh, oh no. Uh, a dirty rat. <laughs> dirty rat. <laughs> yeah. Is it greater? <clears throat> uh, it's actually an entirely different creature. No. Oh! Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> no, no. It's it's in this corner. So you actually failed to see it with your perception check. Uh and as you get close to it and it takes an attack against you, uh it is very clearly what appears to be some sort of shadow demonic creature. Um and it will take one attack of opportunity. Oh. So sorry. <laughs> It will get a natural 20. Oh, shit. I should have been rolling to see for everyone to see. Uh, it will do 20 points of claw damage to you. Damn. Uh, is there Good anything you else you would like to do with your turn? Well, so so far, far, I've only used my movement, right? Like 20. Yes. I've used like 20 feet of movement. Um, I think you've moved like 30 or 40 feet actually, but I think you're still good. I think you've not gone outside your movement range. I'm back. Welcome back. Because I started. Oh, no, you're right. 20, yeah, 25 feet. Right there. Okay. Um, is using a healing potion a bonus action? It is. Okay. Uh, so I still got my action then. We'll. Uh, you was our action to take a swing at this guy, whatever the hell he is. Um, and we're going to do it reckless style. Okay. It's an 18 to hit. That's a hit. And this is silvered, a silver great axe, so it's going to be 13 damage. I don't know if silver... Does anything to him? Uh, it doesn't seem to to allow your weapon to take hold uh, any better in this instance, and it, your weapon does seem slightly ineffective. You do hurt it, just not as much. And as do you I recognize this creature? Uh, make an Arcana check. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Ooh, seventeen. You've heard tales of these creatures, specifically either on the plains of Avernus or somewhere in the Nine Hells or the Abyss. It is a shadow demon. It is uh, a little bit of a slippery creature due to its shadowy demeanor. Um, and okay. because it's demonic, you know that they are very tough in terms of uh, damage resistance. And then 5, 10, 15, 20. So, so I could use mobile uh, to get away from him without... Oh, he already got his attack of opportunity, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20. So 20... He basically used his reaction to attack you. Yeah. So <laughs> 20 feet would get me to about here, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that, that in the blood? Me. No, that's entirely out of the blood. Fantastic. So I've used my bonus action. 
I've used as much movement as I want to use. I haven't used my bonus action. And I'm pretty hurt. Uh, so I think I'm going to chug a big ass potion of healing. Okay. I want, I'm going to use the 4d4. I have the 8d4. Oh shit. Is it too soon for 8d4? Cause I, I'm at 17 out of 71 health and I kind of. I mean, I, I have a lot of healing options, but I also was thinking my next turn I'd use Detect Magic to see if I can find the cloaked dude. Unless we already found him. Okay. I, I'm just going to chug still, this. Are we still fighting that guy? Did he get away? Superior, so 18 uh, so, Yeah, so Sir Venom, we actually took our like five-minute break, and then uh, Vincent ran down into that area, oh, and then eight. Axel's taking his turn. Shit. How do I so nothing's what really happened. We think he uh he's Cancel. hiding in the room Boom. next door. So this is four. Somewhere. Eight wait. We're chasing him still is the answer. Eight D four. So I click D four eight times. Four. It's a lot. And then you add eight to that as well. Twenty one to add eight, alright. Alright. Twenty nine then. Yeah, it's 2d4 plus 2, 4d4 plus 4, 8d4. So as eight. I came out of this room, uh, you hear Axel shouting Shadow Demon. <laughs> 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 and uh, it should be loud enough for everyone can hear. Um, yeah, so a bit panicked because I was hurt. And uh, yeah, uh, and now it is the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, Riku, what are you doing? Riku, do you still have those uh, those magic glasses of, like, True Sight or whatever? I do have them. But, uh, I don't know if now's the time, but I will... Uh, Maybe like if my uh, I was gonna try to try detect magic. Maybe if that doesn't work. So there's my movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I dash, get me. I try to be stepping out of the blood here. Oh, that's okay. in the blood. Uh, what I'll say is, because you're saying that you're stepping out of the blood, I'll allow it. I think I said, I think uh, you didn't say that, Axel, when he took Yeah, I was in that square. I thought it was out of the blood. And... Sorry. Yeah. No, with, with that instance, like, if you're, like, full, if the square's, like, fully out of the blood, you're good. But, like, you got to say, at least with this one, I'll say. Um. So, Riku, you claim you're out of the blood. You're good. Is there anything else you would like to do with a bonus action? Uh, bonus action... Look at Axel, say, you get that son of a bitch, and uh, hit him with the, the bardic. Oh, nice. And you feel slightly inspired by that, Axel. Yeah, how about uh, you hit me with some healing, too? Sir Venom. I thought you just chugged a potion. Yeah. Would I have to use um, like movement plus dash to get to where Riku is? Yeah, basically. So I do that. Maybe if I go here, am I out of the blood? You are out of the blood there. Yep. Okay. So I want to go as far as I can, but I don't want to be in the blood. Gotcha. Um. Okay. I think that's everything, everything else. All right. Uh, we've got Rictavio and Irina. Uh, Rictavio is going to run up to the other side of the door, and he'll be like, Jesus Christ, I have to stay out of this fucking blood. Uh, Casimir will be winded, and he'll step to here out of the blood. Irina. She will move to there out of the blood. That was all of her movement and everything. Uh, the Shadow Demon. It will spring forward. Hmm, it's got 30 feet. And it will move there immediately to engage with Axel. 
as it comes around the corner. It will take an attack against Axel for nine, therefore missing. Uh, yeah, that'll be its full turn. And that brings us to Vincent. What would you like to do? Um, pump two shots into the back of this thing's back while it's attacking uh, my pal here. Okay. Uh, with snipe shots, so minus five. 23. That's a hit. For 19. Okay. And uh, your arrows are magical arrows automatically, right? Yep. Okay. So it's fully effective on this creature. Magic and silvered. Yep. All right. Uh, then I'll take uh, another shop with a sniper. Uh, 15? Uh, 15 is a hit. All right, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'm going to re-roll that. Okay. Uh, because that was not good. Oh, I have to take it, it says. Oh, <laughs> so, 11. Uh, 11 plus your... Oh, plus, plus four. four, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15, gotcha. Yep. <laughs> Well, good. Uh, the um, Shadow Demon is actually bloodied. You do begin to see the demonic blood spilling out of this creature's back near its wing joints, and it shrieks in pain as your arrows hit it. All right, and I'm going to use bonus action second wind to get a little bit of health back. Ah, uh -huh, okay. That'd nice. D10 plus 8. Before I use a potion or anything. So, 9 plus 8. <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, and um, then I guess I have. I'm just gonna back up. So. Okay, Axel, what would you like to do? Um, going to take an attack and do bonus that. Um, what the hell do I do? Recklessly attack, great weapon mastering. All right. So, uh, we'll roll, we'll do our bless. Uh, so 19 minus five, 14. Uh, 14. That is a hit. All right. Mm. Big money, big money. 20 for that hit. So 20 total for that. Okay. Yeah. Still up. Uh, and then we'll do our second attack. Uh, still recklessly and great whip mastering. It's a big old whiff. Uh, and then we're ending our turn. Okay. Riku, what would you like to do? Crickets. <clears throat> Going to... I can't pass through its uh, area, right? Yeah, uh, you cannot. Okay. I'll uh, walk up, smack it with the sword. Okay, and as you get close to it with the bright light, it begins to shy away from it. You had a bardic, by the way. 14, is that... Actually, I got the bless. Uh, that's actually good enough to hit. And in this instance, I'm going to say uh, it only had 5 HP left. 
uh, you are able to send it back to the abyss as you strike it down. You can see that whatever sliver of it was holding it to this plane is tethered in this moment, and that as you strike the creature dead, its shadow form begins to dissipate and seeps into the castle earth below. Um, at this point, combat has ended. You do not see Rahadin anywhere, although you do see those footprints. That misty step he used was actually pretty big. Let's follow him, boys. Yeah, Vincent goes and checks out the, what you said, like a sconce type thing. Yep. Yeah, there's uh, some candelabras there. And uh, can I do some sort of, I would like play with it or tinker with it or investigate it to think that it's some sort of trap door behind it. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll an investigation check in that area. Casimir is like, where the fuck is he? He's like clearly fuming. Yeah. He went behind some sort of trap door. (laughs) He's over here somewhere as he starts like pulling on like the candles on the wall and stuff, knocking on the wall. Uh, Nothing happens as you pull on the candles and everything. As you knock on the wall, I can put it back on if you want. Um, as you knock on the wall, you feel it give way to your hand. Oh. And it is a false wall that oh. leads to a set of dusty stairs leading downwards. And, uh, can I uh, bust through it with like a, my shell or something? Yeah. Did you go? Yeah, it's a it's an illusionary wall. It, so you oh, don't an illusionary wall. Oh, yeah, okay. you don't even need to push through it. Like you're as you go to mm. knock on it, basically your hand just passes through. Oh, it. I would uh, call back to the gang. Go, hurry, boys! This way, I found a secret uh secret exit, and uh, I'll give pursuit. Perfect. Let's make let's make haste. Okay. Uh, deeper down you go. Do we see bo- footprints at all? Uh, you uh, roll a survival check. Actually, that's a good question. What about the arcane eyes? That's still up. I believe it would not be because I think spiritual weapon or spear guardians. Spiritual weapon, I think, is a constant concentration check. No, it's not. Arcane really? eyes still up. Wow. Okay. Uh, let me let me see. Oh, nice. That did do that. That did exactly what I wanted. Well, maybe um, we're in the eye ahead in this instance. So you're here. I will put you guys here. You can put yourselves wherever you would like. Vincent would yell, someone with light, lead the way. Well, wouldn't it make sense to, you know, start making our way down, but send the eye hand to head to scout for us, basically? Sure, but we, yeah, we should do run that. quickly after. All right. getting away. You'd like to send the eye forward? Yeah, we'll send it like um, or, 50 feet in front of us or something. Or we're in the secret tunnels and we take this opportunity to be quiet. It's probably This is probably some like back alley door to like Strahd's bedroom. Well, okay, the eye so... is quiet and invisible. I know. I'm just saying like, should we slow down and uh, use this to our advantage or just hot pursuit? So what I'll say is is this. The eye is able to see around the corner, at least, to the bottom of the stairs, which has another door at the bottom. So it's not able to go further. The door is closed. Quietly to the door and investigate. Someone with high perception. High perception, you say? High. It's not on the other side. Let's all go quietly. Okay. As you... Descend down these stairs towards this area. Uh, let me find the correct map here. All right, so these stairs descend quite a ways. Uh, it goes. It's ancient stone and worn smooth. Dust covers its steps, except for what you can clearly see to be foot, uh, footprints, some with <clears throat> ever slight bits of blood dripping off of them, leading downwards. 
Um, as you get close to As you get close to who's going first? Actually, before we head down these stairs, what's everyone's uh, HP look like? I could That's use great. a heal. We're all hurting. All right, in that case, I will cast Prayer of Healing. And I'll do it at third level. So let's see. Um, are there any characters who like are at full health? No. I can not. heal six people. And there's seven of us. Ooh, I feel like Casimir is. I feel like Casimir is the odd guy out. <laughs> Ooh. Poor Kaz. Yeah, we, we, he now. just kind of showed up. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. You know what? I, I still have I still have pretty good HP, so I'll do it on everyone except me. Uh, Irina, too? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And how much was that total? Uh, 26. 26 per person? Oh, no. 21 per person. Holy shit. Okay. Irina's at full. Did you say 26? 21. 21, okay. <laughs> Selective hearing there. I was was not paying attention. Uh, a bigger number. <laughs> yeah, almost. Uh, it's, all right. Yeah, that's that's oh, pretty I'm much me at full way minus like Dang. 2 HP. I mean, that does Rictavio a lot of good. That does uh, Casimir yeah. a lot of good. Uriel yeah, never did anything like good. that. Yeah, welcome to the group, big guy. <laughs> uh, then he would walk over to him and put his arm around him. Say, uh, hey. Are you aware, Raven? I, uh, I look at him and I say, no, I was uh, raised with a lot of wear ravens and trained by them, especially uh, you know when it came to getting comfortable in the air. But, you know, my magic, you know, maybe raven flavored because of uh my deity but i am in fact not a were raven shame but i know a lot of were ravens if you uh if you want me to you know put you in touch with one and then i, I, I got I'd a lot of reasons to be like the the raven queen is aware of you vincent she uh she's got plans for you are we still blessed I hope she has plans for us all. Um, yes, unless it wore, wore off. Does it last more than a minute? I think so. I think less just a minute. Oh, then you would not be blessed at this point, I would say. Yeah, concentration up to a minute. So we can get rid of those. Uh, who try to hunt who, down this guy? Who's leading the way down the <clears throat> stairs? Riku. Riku with the sun sword. Okay, Riku, as you step there. Oh. <laughs> mm hmm. Mist forms around you. The visage of Count Strahd appears before you, saying, You have worn out your welcome here. Whatever gods you believe in cannot save you now. What would you like to do? Same to you, devil. Riku attacks. Yeah, what's Make a an attack roll? What's a visage? Like a hologram? <laughs> okay. We'll find out momentarily. <laughs> Axel. 14. Uh, it passes through the appearance of Count Strahd. So it's not him? It is not him. But go ahead and do your damage and everything. Is this a recorded message or are we like actually talking to him? Ask him. Is that you? Or are you uh or is this a message? <laughs> and as you pass your sword through him, it simply chuckles and fades away into mist. That tells us where you are. We're coming for you, Strahd. Riku puts sold on shoulder, turns to group. Back to his old tricks, I see. We have him on the ropes. 
You think, uh, does this mean he's awake now? Perhaps. Well, he knows we're here. He knows where we are. <laughs> we must be getting close to something he doesn't want us getting close to. Let's go kill his best friend. <laughs> yes. Let us, <laughs> let us descend. This is totally not the way he, he was trying to take us to begin with. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you can you got this, Riku. <laughs> Come on, guys. All right. And as you descend down the stairs, oh, reaching the door, would you like to go beyond? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Opening the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You open the door into what is a square chamber with a number of doors off of it as well as some alcoves who's that you actually got uh, he's he's actually not there sorry <laughs> oh, that's my but, bad uh, but he was that's my bad he's not actually there bye bye um in this room you see the following this room is 30 feet square, rising to a 20-foot tall flat ceiling. A stone, bra uh, stone brazier burns fiercely in the center of the room, but its tall white flame produces no heat. The rim of the brazier is carved with seven cup-shaped indentations and spaced evenly around the circumference. With each indentation is a spherical stone, twice the diameter of a human eyeball, and made of a colored crystal. No two stones are the same color. Overhead, a wood-framed hourglass, and as tall and wide as a dwarf, hangs ten feet above the brazier, suspended from the ceiling by thick iron chains. All the sand is stuck in the upper portion of the hourglass, seemingly unable to run down into the bottom. Written in glowing script at the base is a verse in common. Two nine-foot-tall iron statues of knights on horseback, poised to charge with swords drawn, stand in deep alcoves facing each other. The brazier sits between them. Uh, Riku would like to have a closer look at whatever this inscription says. Okay. And so this is the inscription on... Uh, where is that again? Are we all still standing on the staircase, or is my owlbear broken? The base of the... No, you are still standing on the staircase. Do you not want to be? Do you want to... I, we, you guys I, think, we're in the, I think we're in the room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I just don't think I put you guys down here yet. Should uh, I shoot the uh, hourglass of sand? No. Activate this thing? No. Okay, so you want to read the underside <laughs> of the hourglass, is that correct? Yeah, wherever the inscription was that uh, you mentioned. Okay. Uh, while we're all investigating, I'd uh, I'd take a moment to like sit down and try to get the tech magic going. Uh, it says, cast a stone into the fire. Violet leads to the mountain spire. Orange to the castle's peak. Red if lore is what you seek. Green to where the coffins hide. Indigo to the master's bride. Blue to ancient magic's womb. Yellow to the master's tomb. Uh, Riku, Riku looks looks up to the the lads and says, "I believe this might be some sort of teleportation circle." Yeah, that's definitely what it sounds like. How do we get to Strahd's chamber? Uh, can I ritual um, identify this? Uh, you can. You may do so. Okay. Uh, Riku just holds his finger up and says, "Give me ten minutes, boys. I'll figure out what's going on here." Well, then Vincent's gonna take a look around and see if he can find anything in the room. In the 10 minutes <laughs> okay uh so there are two doors to the north um there is one door to the south there are the two statues as well uh... so anybody got a green stone oh, so the right, stones well, are all set into the side oh, of the right. of the oh, brazier okay i think we might just have to like touch them or do something to interact with them in a way well, toss. it said what, what, toss a stone. It said toss it in, right? Yeah. Oh. Well, the different colors stone does different yeah, color so, things. Yeah. So did you yeah. ask send it to us? What did... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah send it's it to in us. the it chat. Yeah. Okay. So what's where do we think? Um... It says green to where the coffins hide. 
I know that's the down one. I want his like up high. Is uh, he's where we're supposed Castle's to find peak? him. Is, yeah, that one. But it says the yellow is the master's tomb. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's down below, like his tomb where he like recovers. I think where we fight him is up on. Remember? Well, didn't we figure out that he uh, he had like a balcony that overlooked the yeah, town that's... of Barovia, so there was like a little house in like the back of the property? Right. Do you that think, we think so? Do you think that would be in? down in the coffin? No, it would be up at the top. But he has to regenerate. Like I don't know, don't vampires like like regenerate in coffins? Yeah. Like, like a... What about if Laura's way? Do you think he's laying in a that? coffin right now? Like that's where you think Maybe. he is. He could be oh. still recovering, yeah. Right. Well, I don't think that's where he is. I think he's wandering around his the top of the castle in his lair. Is what I personally think. I could be wrong, but that's where my head is at. Of all these choices, though, which one of these sounds the most... Uh... Oh, Mountain Spire. Hold on. We need to do that, don't we? Like Rikshavio wow. mentioned, we got to kill the Spire. Hmm. What? Yeah, he said to kill... Uh... The count, we have to kill the spire. Okay. No, it would be... It's in the castle, though, so why would it be... Yeah, we gotta be careful with the teleporter. We want to, We don't want to be taken, like, you know, other side of road. What did... <laughs> uh, hey, um... Rictavio, what did you tell us <laughs> we had to destroy in order to, like... After we was it after or before we killed? Um, oh, uh, he told yeah. us something about that. Yeah, so Rictavio recounts the discovery in Darkon of what appeared to be some sort of black obelisk, a black spire, uh, square up until the point which then becomes a pyramid at the top. Um, you know, like the Washington Monument, but entirely obsidian black, tall and hidden away in what would what what they knew to be uh the dark lord of darkon's final uh effect effectively his lair and that that was the thing that they destroyed that allowed them to leave darkon okay so killing strahd alone while it, it, it is a good will not necessarily let you escape barovia that it's the spire itself that rictavia yeah. believes is holding you here all right well, first we gotta kill Strad. Yeah, we're here. My vote is orange. The castle's peak, because uh, Vincent is full of rage and vengeance against this guy. Okay, so says orange. Good. What about everybody else? Not even over, go and grab it in his hands, <laughs> threaten to throw um... it. Um, I think we should uh, we should backtrack real quick to that chest that had like the Strad family crest on it. There may have been something important in like the the hidden room above the demon heart at the top of the tower. Not wrong about that. So you just want to ignore this teleporter. <laughs> well, I mean, we know where it is. We can just go grab what's in the chest, come right back to the teleporter. How about you in the ten minutes? Wait, in the ten minutes, go grab, go back and grab it, and come back while he does his ten minute ritual. That's what you could have done in that ten minutes. I was doing my own detect magic ritual. Oh, of course you were. Okay, Fine. so how about Vincent did... runs back and checks the chest? We can do that if you'd like, Vincent. Uh, while that's all happening, yeah, we'll um, try to make it all at the same time. Okay, uh, Riku, your identification shows that this is a specialized teleportation circle, one that is linked to the gems and the hourglass. That when a gem is tossed in. Uh, you will be teleported to where the hourglass description is describing and that it will drain the hourglass from top to bottom and once it's uh, drained the gem will then magically reappear in its appropriate slot and can be used once more. You also see that they are linked to the two statues on either side of you. That if the hourglass statues or uh, brazier are hurt in any way, the statues will attack, and that they are golems, iron golems. And all, all of right. the stones are still currently like there with their full magic, right? All of Where the stones like... are currently there with their full magic. That is correct. Okay. Here, Riku so tells you guys that... everything. 
a certain someone did not use this to teleport away and may still be somewhere nearby. If you would like, Sir Venom, you may make a perception check at advantage because you just deduced that. And also, if uh, if identify is done, that means I have detect magic up, right? Would I be able to detect like invisibility magic or anything? Yeah, 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 totally. Um, so twenty one. So the perception check lets you show that it looks like the footprints lead to. Let me just see which one. Uh, I gotta check this real quick. And also, I'd uh, I'd whisper to that. Axel to uh, to watch the door, and then I'd uh, whisper to Riku and this other guy right next to me to gather up all the stones and make sure that oh. none of them are easily grabbed. Okay, so the footprints lead to this door here. So they went through this door, um, and. The magic shows all the magical things that uh, Riku basically identified, except you also now know that the doors themselves are magical, and it looks like they have arcane locks cast upon them. You can open any of them. Like, the one that you went through, in fact, is magical, but it's not currently arcane locked. You suspect that there's some mechanism that opens and, like, causes them to lock. Probably damaging a mechanism probably locks us in for the golems to kill everybody. <laughs> I would, I would quietly inform the party that uh, that bastard we're chasing went through this door over here. Okay. Vincent. Yeah. You would like to run all the way back to the top of the tower. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And we're going to bring my, you... Uh, my raven familiar with him, just in case. Uh, has it been around at all? Have you had that? Um, I've time? kept them. I just haven't done either one, anything with them. I've just... Uh, I've kept him he off. Did just fire, he did like the bit. fire, uh, fire okay. feathers on my other guy. Nice. Okay. All right. So we will bring you back up the stairs. Uh, would you like to roll me some d20s, please? Oh, boy. Yeah. How many? Uh, let's roll one, two, three. Okay. A one, a four, and a three. Okay, uh, all good. Yeah. All right. Um, go ahead and roll me as we go to the next floor. Which one is this? It's going to be this one. Go ahead and roll me a d20, please. Just one, in this instance. A two. All good. Glow. Uh, going. Low is good in this instance. Go ahead and roll me another. If you roll bad is do lucky. All right, nine. All good. We're going up another flight. And this will be your last one for a little bit. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Are we thinking about the right thing? Oh, yeah. You You wanted the chest all the way at the top of that tower, right? I thought it was at the bottom. Nope. Okay, well, either way. Yeah, whatever chest there is. I just thought it was in the room that uh, he escaped through. Uh, there was that no... I found the, that I found the false thing. Okay. I'm there was no chest in that room. Okay. All right, no, well, no. either way. I'm good. Okay. Since it's going on a quick mission. I, this is longer than I thought. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Wait. I I mean, was just you, well, up this is where you thing. wanted to go. You can turn I... back if you'd like. Oh, I mean, hey, I'm pot committed at this point. Jesus. Okay, so one more D20, and then uh, we're going to skip the room with the heart, and we're going to go up to that last room. A one? <laughs> All good. All good. Okay, so you are in this room at this point, Vincent? Yeah. Uh, and in this room is a chest by the bed and the trap door above you. Yeah. I'm going to very quietly check the chest. Uh, How okay. heavy is that chest? Uh, it's pretty heavy. Um, okay, yeah, we'll open it. But as you open Try it, it. Uh, the chest is locked. Yeah. 
Um. <laughs> All that way. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what can I do? Um. I've got to have something. I don't have any spells. I've got like pittens. Can I uh, try to pick the lock with a pitten? You can attempt to pick the lock, uh, and I would say because of the tools that you're using, you can do so at disadvantage. Yeah, it's worth a try. What, uh, uh we got a sleight of hand or something? Yeah, uh, or dexterity oh. check. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, I'll do a dex at disadvantage. Okay, so the one, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, in fact, the pitten gets stuck in the lock, yeah. and you think All you right. jam the lock. Ah, dang, dang. Um, uh, can I try to... What do I got on me? I want to try to bash the lock off. Okay. Um, do you have something you can use to bash it with? Yeah, I must. I've got... Ooh, Oh, yeah. I've got a rapier, I've got a longbow, I've got rations, torch, water skin. Uh, Vincent would look around the room and look for a, uh, like a, a metal sconce or something uh, on the wall that I could use to bash the lock off. Or maybe uh, on the bed here. So funny enough, there's nothing on the bed. Uh, there are iron manacles on the walls yeah. that you might be able to use to bash the, the lock with. Yeah, I'm going to go grab something off the wall and... Uh, and use it to try to smash those block off. Just give me a quick strength check. Uh, not very strong, but I'm very dexterous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not bad. 16? Okay. You are able to pull one of the uh, manacles apart uh, from a rusted bit from another rusted bit. Basically, you rip them across each other. And uh, you now have a manacle that you can use to try to bash open the lock. If you'd like to do so, make an athletics check. Oh, a one. I'm going to lucky that roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, nat 20. Okay. So it's funny because you, you think it would have been really tough for you to do this uh, uh, in general. Um, you think the way the pitten sort of jammed in there might have been actually a good thing. And in this case, you use the manacles and you just like a, a weird lopsided hammer hitting a nail and it causes the chest to pop open. And as you look inside... The chest contains a bejeweled golden crown resting on a silky pillow. Vincent puts it on. Damn, that sounds cool. It is beautiful. It does not fit your turtle skull very well, but you suspect that it is worth hundreds, if not thousands of gold pieces based on its weight. Uh, it, it's solid gold, and the jewels are diamonds, rubies, sapphires. It is... Incredible look at good thing we're back to that chest. This is perfect. Goes well with that scepter you have. For the Raven King. And then he's gonna uh tuck it under his thing and uh quickly try to rush back to the group. Okay. Can you please roll me six D twenty? Yep. Uh oh. Yeah, these look higher. Uh, a 1, a 1, a 9, a 14, a 15. Uh, you are good. It was 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh. That mattered in this instance. Uh, so you make it back to the group. Uh, are you wearing the crown? Uh, yes, I'm wearing the crown. I, I didn't wear it the whole time, but I wore it to walk into the room. Okay. And you are back in the room with the others at this point. What you got there, bud? New crown? What do you guys think? Sharp suspect... looking dome piece you got there, Vincent. I suspect this is Strahd's. But, uh. Ooh, I really suspect cool. it was Strahd's, and yeah, now. Yeah, it'll really piece. go up his ass sideways when he sees me wearing it. Oh, I kill him. I stand over his dead body, put a final arrow into his heart. Free this land already this dead, Vincent. Yeah, it doesn't even have a heart. You know what I um, mean? that as well. 
So, oh yeah, we're supposed to be whispering because that guy's over there. Yeah, did you guys uh, figure out where the guy went? Points, points that door. door. No, it's the other side of this door. Are we going after him or are we going to teleport to Strahd? What do you guys decide on? Go after him. Yeah, let's yeah. go kill him. We can teleport you... afterwards. Yeah. Remember uh, where this is. Can anybody open that door? Uh, Vincent checks right. the door. Uh, yeah, all of the doors will open for you at this point in time, if you so wish. Uh, that one in particular leads to another beautiful spiral staircase. This uh, one, however, goes upwards. Only up? This one goes only up. I like going up. All right, boys. We going up? Or do you want to teleport? Uh, Vincent checks for bloody footprints. Uh, you can see footprints in the dust well enough. Uh, they're they're losing their blood rapidly, and there's very little blood in this area. But you can see that there's dust through the foot, or there's footprints through the dust here. Yeah, he went up there. Yeah, I think we finish on this guy down. Let's finish Probably him. gonna lead us right to Strahd, is my guess too. So I'm kind of there's no way. Him. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that definitely is way. He's gonna go tell him that we fucked him up. There's no way. Right, let's go. Vincent gives chase. It's just go ask him. I should have had him follow Vincent. Just us talking while we're like following the footsteps. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure I bring you to the right place. Cool. Okay. And we'll go to this one. I think it's just going to insist he's going somewhere to lick his wounds. And in this instance, you see that it opens up into a spiral staircase here and a spiral staircase here with. Yeah. This is just a maze. It really is. And I'm just going to put the group token here and we can get an updated group token at some point. But uh, you're, you're ascending the stairs with the, in this area here. Uh, in this space is, let me give you a quick descriptor. Uh, this is just a spiral stair. The 30 foot long corridor connects two spiral stairways, one leading up, the other descending into the depths of Castle Ravenloft from where you came. Hanging from an iron rod bolted to the eastern wall is a dusty 10 foot square tapestry depicting knights on horseback charging across a battlefield under a blood red sky. The lead knight rides a black horse and wears fur-lined black cloak, dark gray armor, and a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. His sword glows in the light of the sun. Legendary. Two. Okay. Um, continuing onwards and upwards? Yeah, if we think he... Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can roll a survival check, but uh, yeah, it's up to you guys. Yeah, we don't want to lose them either. Following. What I would say then is your survival oh, check. I got a bad one. I got a uh, his Wait. footprints appear to continue upwards, although they're getting more and more faint. We gotta catch up. Alright, as you ascend... Quickly, don't lose him, Vincent. Just make sure this is <laughs> one. Five. Ah. Sorry, I'm just like connecting the dots appropriately. Okay, so the the staircase is going to go for like a hundred feet up, Ooh. and it will lead you all the way back to the library. So you guys will come out of the staircase here. So you came up this staircase, basically. Okay. 
Uh, I'd look around for any signs of this this guy. But then we just did a giant circle. Right. This castle. Where are you, Strahd? Uh, make a survival check if you would like to look around for signs of him. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Welcome from Axel. All right. So between the two of you, uh, you are able to rather swiftly determine that, hey, and you see little spots of like the probably the last spots of blood off of his boots go through the door here. And when you investigate and look through that room, he went through the window down here and this way. A window? Oh, is yep. there like a balcony out there? There is a balcony out there. Here, I can... Uh, uh... This was the dinner he had for us? No, we were already here. In fact, I'll just... Uh, I'll just oh, a balcony. This is it. This up. Uh, Shit. This is it. Jump through the window. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Prepare yourself, guys. Cup check. Draws a bow. Draws an arrow. <laughs> uh, as you look, you can see that it looks like... Um, the last, and, and it's the two of you leading, so the 18 and 20 are giving you this. Uh, it looks like his footprints lead to a spiral staircase that descends back into the castle. This guy's fucking with us. Yeah, right? All right. Fuck him. <laughs> he, leads, him go. he leads you to room with a spiral staircase. <laughs> uh, All right. And I'd leave here and go, All right. Are we gonna keep, what is this guy doing? I don't think we should keep chasing this guy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. All right, Riku, Riku, the leader, wants to keep going. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're too far now. We must, we must venture forth. Eventually, he's going to lead us into like a room with like a hundred vampires. How does he know that we're chasing? He doesn't know. The guy's smart. All right, he's one of them Let's smart. Go. He's one of them book book boys. I'm a book boy. Follow me. <laughs> Well, I don't see you in the lead there, Riku. Your big ass yeah, lighting. Yeah, so you guys were hot on his trail. I was letting you guys lead. Yeah, well, well, we're pointing. We're leading. Yeah. You take the lead off you. <laughs> All right, cool. Riku leads the way. What to follow the guy then? Whatever. Okay, uh, you go down the stairs, Riku. Yeah, yeah. Vincent right. will follow Riku if he wants to keep going. Let me just look back. Find the right thing here. That is. I mean, at minimum, we're exploring the castle while chasing this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it yeah. is staircase by staircase. <laughs> All right. So this is going to lead you back into the castle. Actually. And this is going to bring you to this staircase over here. To which is a unlit hallway with a door at the end. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Actually, is that a door? There is no door at the end. Whoa. You can see that that brings you to a, a, a hallway and you can't see any further at this moment in time. But I will put you in that hallway. Oh, go check it out. Well, blood. do we keep going down the stairs or do we go down this hallway fellas have we been in this room before you have not this is an unfamiliar place to you all right um well Rick, you hear Rictavio say you know besides the fact that I was close with Esmeralda and I miss her it's a damn shame that she's dead, considering she'd explored some of this castle. True. Yeah. This is a big <laughs> castle. It's a damn shame. Yeah. We all miss her. Her yeah, knowledge. Rick, Rick Tavio <laughs> says, appreciate it. Appreciate it, Riku. Yeah, Riku fist bumps and then says, let's go. I'll venture. Holds out sword. Leads on. Uh, which way am I leading on, boys? That way. Back down the stairs, <laughs> continuing. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to give no, a no, vague no, answer. No, Riku's making oh, his okay. executive decision. No, we're yeah, going down make the hallway. It a, make it a, there's no wrong answer here, Riku. We're, we're going down the hallway. We're going down the hallway. 
go. Okay. Yeah, that one. As you do so, uh, can I get two d20s rolled, please? Oh, jeez. Those and are big. What'd you guys get? Those are big rolls. 15 and an 18. 15 and an 18? Yep. Uh, okay. The 18, uh, can somebody please roll me? This is this is an actual big roll. Uh, oh, actual big roll. Yeah. Go ahead and roll a d12 and a d8 together. Not me. Someone else. All right. I got, I got a d12 and a d8. A one and a three. We like small rolls, right? A four. <laughs> Let's say a four. There is one black cat. Oh, in this room here. Something Actually. crazy could have happened, though. Yeah, and I well, get a cat. You want me? Uh, you want yeah. me to talk to the cat? The, yeah, this is your time to shine, fellow. All right. Axel walks up to the cat and starts purring, uh, but he's actually saying, hey, what's up, cat? <laughs> uh, and as you do so, I'll, I'll give you uh, some descriptors of these rooms as well, just to give you a feel for what's happening here. Um, uh, this is actually similar to the other room, uh, similarly shaped, mostly decrepit tiled ceiling that had a fresco on it that you can't make out anymore. Uh, the black cat looks up at you and uh, it gives a hiding. Hiding from witches. Uh, hey, you got a name? Are you, are you like... What's, what's they, your name, they, cat? They call me Patches because they try to rip off patches of my fur. <laughs> okay. But I'm, but I'm actually Whiskers McGee. Whiskers McGee, uh, it's a pleasure. I am Axel. Uh, have you like, seen like the spokes of a wheel? Uh, I guess I don't know how wheels are constructed. Yeah, this this cat knows a suspicious amount about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have you seen like an elf? Uh, have you seen a guy, suspicious looking guy, come through here? Uh, I have not. Hmm. I mean, you're rather suspicious looking. Oh, I mean, that's, uh, that's like, that's kind of mean. Uh, so what you're trying to hide, uh, you want to like, come hang out with us. We're trying to find the, the like, uh, we're looking for Strahd. I don't know if you've seen him. I don't know who Strahd is. <laughs> well, this is his castle. Oh. Uh, you know, um, Riku, Riku nudges X. What's the cat saying? He's, his name is Whiskers McGee. He's hiding from some witches. Oh yeah. You're hiding from witches. Uh, witches like, are the witches. where are the witches? Yeah. Where are the witches? The witches? Ah, uh, they were, they're far away. I ran far away from them. He said he ran from them. Can you ask, ask him if, ask him if he can show us around the castle at all? Oh, do you know? Are do you know? Like, are you know the layout of the castle that we're in? I mean, you're here. How'd you get here? You gotta know, like, some stuff. I, I, well, I, I don't know. I, I go around a lot of stairs. <laughs> There's a lot of stairs. Yep. yep. Look, my my expert my expertise is in mechanics of moving vehicles, not castle geography. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, pocket raccoon. All right. Well, uh, would you would you like to come along with us, Whiskers? And you can see that there's actually so funny <laughs> enough. Uh, he kind of like does that cat thing where he like loops around something like a table leg, basically, and then comes back over here. And you notice that there's like um, some like children's toys, <laughs> and these children's toys are literally horses and wagons. Uh, and he goes over to him. He goes, I, I prefer it here, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Is your monkey around? What happened to your monkey? He's in my bag. He's in my bag. He's chilling. Oh, all right. Don't worry. I'm just, I'm trying to make sure this guy isn't like, uh, you know, it's a, like a lot, he's either a lost cat or like, 
or a yeah, human, like in cat form. Yeah. Insight check him. I don't know. He seems seems legit. A yeah. Cat. <laughs> I'm talking to him. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Riku Riku's uh <clears throat> walks in and He's says, Well he seems he room. seems friendly enough and goes and holds his hand out to him. And he kind of shies away and says, uh, says to you, Axel, <clears throat> why does this one want to touch me? He thinks you're cute. He's a bit of a furry. Oh, you're not going to hurt <laughs> me like the witches. <laughs> He's like hiding now behind like this stool. Well, now that the cat's hiding, Riku, Riku kind of just like looks around the room, see if there's anything uh, interesting besides the cat. <laughs> Uh, not really. Like I said, it's a mostly decrepit room. It looks like it was almost a dining room at one point. It has the arrow slits uh, used for defense as well. So you can see down into the courtyard and you can see everybody down there. Same situation as before. Riku's like, all right, keep talking to your cat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, we're going to go now. Uh, Axel bows on his way out. Okay. Uh, that is the, the proper way to say farewell to a cat. <laughs> Out of all the things, you guys rolled a four. I'm <laughs> going to go now. <laughs> was that Pooch's or what was the dog <laughs> from Simpsons? The, uh, the witches the cat was talking about. We have to like watch out for there, he said they're the far. He said they're far yeah, away from him. Away. He ran. Um, Anything going on in this room or is it just the same thing as the other one? Same thing as the other one. Uh, it has arrow slits for defensive fortification. Uh, in particular, nothing else, I believe. Yeah, it's the exact same as the other room previously described, basically. On the other side of the castle, same floor. Riku turns says, all right, not here, boys. And let's let's uh, keep going. The group okay, walks would away. Would you like to go down the stairs? I think yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we lost the the trail? Uh, if you would like, you may roll a survival check. We rolling, we rolling bad. I see me roll. You have lost the trail. Oh. All right. Let's just keep going anyway. Okay, down uh, that set of stairs once again. Yeah. Okay. Like the cat said, there's lots of stairs. Yeah, yep. we're straight exploring this castle. There are a lot of stairs. You are back on the first floor. And... Wait, did that like a paste different you? area, though, right? Yeah, you are in a different area. And it is down here, as I provide you with some detail. Um... This area is another long hallway, similar to the one above. Uh, in this instance, however, it is uh, on the first floor. Uh, the stairs do continue to descend, if you wish. But it looks like there's another uh, octagonal room at the end of the hallway. Um, so far as you can tell from where you were, exact same as beforehand. And then there is a hallway to the north. Riku looks at the group is like, should we be thorough? Just keep going down. Are we still looking for that guy? Kinda. <laughs> We're also just exploring at this point, you know? Yeah. Because we found that teleporter thing. I guess we'll just hold off on the teleporter then. If we're just going to keep yeah. going Yeah. I can up. always dimension door us there. Um, Two of us. So we had an option to go down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we get an option to go down this hallway and see what's in the rest of the first floor. I guess we could clear the what's cl clear the first floor. I guess, or do we keep going down. Well, doesn't matter to me. All right, we're going down. All right, going down once more. Let me grab down, you all. down, down. That burning pit of fire. Uh, 
I don't think I've ever had a group bounce around <laughs> in Castle Ravenloft so aggressively. Not that that's a bad thing, mind you. It's kind of fun. Uh, I think we're mostly see. just confused on where. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah just you're watching a group just be it's like, I don't know where to go. Yeah, we. That's part of the problem is we don't know where to go. So it's like, uh, yeah, I guess check this door, check that hallway, check the stairs. <laughs> well, run back solo, grab that box. So yeah, when we uh, when we were in Argenvost, no, Amber Temple, yeah. we saw uh -huh. like the the room where they had kind of like the model of the castle. Yeah. So did, would that help us like in this situation? Well, that would help you determine where you're trying to go. So if you said, mm -hmm. um, I want to go to the tallest, top of the tallest tower, you could make a survival check. And then like, I could give you some like clues as to where you need to be headed from where you are. All right. Is that one of the, uh, one of the also, memories? We that just had a teleporter that literally would have taken us to almost any place we wanted to inside the castle. S sorry, Sir Venom, what were you saying again? Uh, the memory of that like that castle model is that one of the memories that would have been transferred over from i believe Uriel? i believe we gave you that one based on a history check you made and in terms of the teleporter vincent there was a teleporter uh it had a number of things associated to uh like a uh, kind of a riddle so yeah what's this what on the wall we... here it's like i'm a... sorry say that again this uh there's this thing right here what is that uh 64 let me give you a description of where you are at this point in time are we in this yeah i think we're in oh, wait what room are we in the, uh... we're in the southern the southern oh, one. Oh my bad i thought <laughs> we're like <laughs> oh vincent's up on the north so the group is confused. in the middle and then the group is the south. <laughs> a bit confusing like you said we were all over the place uh, okay. okay as you round the corner at the bottom of these stairs you see a hallway, and this 10-foot-wide arched corridor is cold and moist. The cold seems to emanate from an arch, open archway in the west wall. Moist. Oh. You guys want to take a look? Yeah, there's... Hell yeah. Is it lit? Or... Oh, stick your sword in there. Light it Everything up. is lit where I am. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying, like in general, do we need you to see? At least I do. I think. Okay. Sickly yellow lichen covers the ceiling of this cold, damp, ten foot wide passage running east and west. Opening off both sides of this passage are ten foot square alcoves that contain rotting cots, rags, and the skeletal remains of castle guards. A deathly silence fills this hall. Hmm. <laughs> Axel uh takes his dagger and scoops up some lichen for for uh the road. Okay. Do you have like a uh, actually if you would like you could put it into the empty vial uh that held your potion. Okay. So a vial of lichen? Yeah, vial of yellow lichen. Nice. Um, looks like another hallway. Is this a dead end? Uh, it appears to be. There is a door to the north of the hallway that you're currently in. Do you enter this hallway at all? I think we do. What do you guys think? I mean, we've made it this far. Yeah. Go ahead, what, enter. What, what, yeah. What do you? Yeah. Of course, you're gonna have to be How dare you? <laughs> how did you just? How did you describe this room? <laughs> well, as you as you enter, the skeletal remains of what appear to be the castle guards suddenly springs to life. Ah, nice. So, you knew what you were I was, doing. I wasn't paying also... attention. I wasn't paying attention when you described the room. <laughs> uh, yeah. We passed a room like this before, and we didn't enter it, so... Oh, okay. No, I'm just... Um, yeah, this whole hard. just wandering around the castle has got me... My brain was wandering. All good. Uh, there are going to be a bunch of skeletons here. 
Skelly boys, skelly boys. Uh, they are going to be interspersed. Maybe an extra one or two. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. What happened to all the guards? They That's died them. a long time ago. Uh, let me grab the encounter really quick. <clears throat> Oh, looking good for Axel. You might be able to do this fast. Is this going to be one of those? Uh, is this? Uh, are we doing minion rule? What was the rules where we? Uh, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. We can do minion rules. Nice. I can do some splash damage. They're straight at straight line arrows. Uh, okay. Who would like to roll? Let's see. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Big roll. 16. Nice. 16 for Vincent. Do we have an initiative for Sir Venom? Ooh, a four. Oh, okay. Get on that one. Axel, what would you like to do? I'm trying to think if there's anywhere I could do, like, maximum damage. Sir I think... Um... I think these two, if I was right here, I could attack these two, these two, uh, this guy and this guy. Yeah, you could. Yeah, so that would give this guy an attack for opportunity. Okay. You know what? Let's, let's do it. I want to see what kind of damage these skeleton boys are doing. So we'll give them an attack for opportunity on me. I'm going to move that square. 19. That's going to hit. And uh, it's going to be for eight points of damage. Okay. Sorry, that should have been everyone. All right, and then I'll attack the two, uh, the two fellas there with. Uh... Ooh, do I need to great weapon master? You know what? They're skeletons. Let's do it. Great weapon master, recklessly attacking the skeletons, fellas. So we're going all in on them. We got an at twenty. A... Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, for 26 damage. Okay, so that's enough damage to drop both of them, even without the minion rules. In this instance, they are obliterated. Okay. And, and so that was your first attack. Yeah. And let's go, uh, is there anywhere there's two that are bunched up? I don't think so. Because these are like walls. These little things here, yeah. these like walls. They're effectively what was uh, what were alcoves separating uh, like little rooms for these guards. All right. Yeah. So I will then uh, start, start at this guy. Start at the end and work our way. You know? So, yeah, I'm not even going to great weapon master. I'm just going to attack him. Cool. Lazy. Uh, 16. Okay. And, and then uh, the damage is 15 damage. And that one is also gone. And then I'm, uh, how much movement have I used? Like, I don't think I've used that. Yeah. 20. All right. We'll get in here and then end my turn. Okay. Riku, what would you like to do? <clears throat> I'm gonna run in, swing that sword. Uh, Eleven. Uh, that is not good enough to hit, actually. Sad. Very sad. The scraps of armor hanging off of them is enough to prevent you from. Oh wait, never mind. 22's a hit. 22. And because they're undead, there's another. Sixteen radiant. And you fell the closest one to you. Anything else you can do this turn or would like to do? Who then bravely gets behind this alcove here? 
and uh, takes a bit of cover. So brave. Vincent. Vincent is going to draw an arrow and he is going to hold his action <clears throat> until he sees an opportunity of either multiple uh, skeletons either going to gang up on Axel in the corner mm -hmm. or or uh, one of our guys. So basically, I'm just going to wait for them to move and uh, I'm going to shoot once they group themselves up. Okay. Uh, or, or like, you know, like run at me. Like, if they gather up in the hallway on there. Basically waiting for their turn to move. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're actually going to go next. And so... Sure. So I'll a be bunch, ready to... A bunch of them okay. are immediately going to step out into your line of sight. Yeah. So go ahead and make an attack roll. And that's what we're going to do. Uh... So... Just a regular shot, I guess. Uh, 21. That's a hit. All right, so eight damage total. Okay, so that fells the first one. It does not do enough to fell the second. Okay. Then what, uh, at this point, my second shot is going to be at the one in the middle down the end. Of Vince, uh, of Axel. So the one thing, <clears throat> sure. I don't know if the readied action lets you take two attacks. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's Cannot not... be used with the ready action, so it would just be one shot in that instance. All right, then. Um... And then with that, <coughs> sorry, I wanted, um, and can I take the shot instead of when they were lined up, wait for them to be where they are now, and take one that does like an AoE? Yeah, so you want to uh, retcon that? So like instead of that, yeah, like instead of the one I just did when they were all lined up, it looks like they were all just going to group up, which is kind of what I wanted to do anyway. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So if you want AOE instead, yeah, that's totally fine. Oh, yeah, so like wait for them to like swarm Axel, and then I'll do the one shot on them. Gotcha. Instead yeah, that's that, totally fine. Instead of that straight line one, I'll sure. do like a, a grouped one. We'll say it so would perfect. still hit. It would still do that eight damage. And then what would you like right, your AOE? So then I'll I'll add on the um my last of my uh, what's it called shot. It's gonna be the what is it called? Arcane archer. Uh, yeah, but the one that explodes, bursting arrow. Okay. And so creatures within ten feet will take two d six. Oh, okay. So then that's actually gonna kill both of these almost like automatically. Uh, ah, yeah, that's six damage. Yeah, so it kills both of them automatically. All right, then that's well done. Uh, okay. So I guess so. To do guys. that, I would have been more like here, right? Because I wanted to shoot more of Axel, not the guys that came at Riku. But, sure. Uh, then I'm gonna put this one here, and they will get a few swings at you. Uh, I'm gonna say one for each of the three of you there. And it's going to be a two. This one's against Sir Venom, an 18 to hit Sir Venom. And then this one's going to be against Riku, a 23. So Sir Venom, you take eight points of damage. Riku, you take seven points of damage. Uh, 18 actually misses me. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, and it is your turn, Sir Venom. Um, let's start clearing these guys. There's only three, three left. There are. Right. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll attack the one that attacked me. Okay. I'll use my Raven Savagery cantrip with a nat twenty. That is a hit. So thirty-one acid damage. What? Holy shit! And one radiant damage. What? What is that flow? Uh, spell reflavored as? 
uh, primal savagery. It's usually one d10 acid that scales with level. Gotcha. So I'm up to two d10 and four d10 on a crit. Wow. All right. Uh, okay. And so then let's see. One of these guys is obliterated, uh, and I will say that that is enough damage to spill over and destroy the other two. That was a fuck ton of damage. That was a lot of damage for a cantrip. Yeah, that's insane for a cantrip. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I mean that that's abnormal. It was. It was a crit. Yeah. Yeah. It was a crit, and I rolled two eights and a ten. Yeah, it's like a really high crit. Okay. It was only nine away from max damage. Yeah, this is crazy. All right. Um, and that's why I don't need a weapon. And so you find yourselves in this empty hallway, the bags of bones littered around your feet. You have explored up, down, across, and basically through many different stairwells and entryways. The castle of Ravenloft. You find yourselves a little more battered and beaten and bruised than you found yourselves beforehand. And yet, there must be some feeling of accomplishment here. You've lo uh, located quite a different number of passageways without getting yourselves into trouble. Uh, let's pick, pick it up here next week. It's 10.03. And uh, yeah, if, if everyone's good, let's play Monday, if that's cool. Yeah.